Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to welcome to a, a return to the uh, to the live stream builds. I am back in my home studio, and uh, well, I've got some work to do now. Before we do anything, I'm feeling a little bit crap. Uh, I've caught man flu from Tom Webster, who runs Crimson. I was stuck in a car with him for about fifteen hours the other day. Uh, for good reason, but uh, he was obviously very contagious. So, uh, yeah, email office at crimsonguitars.com and uh, just say, Tom, how dare you give Ben the, the lurgy? <sighs> Actually, don't do that. That would be a horrific waste of our time. Um, but anyway, it's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm on the mend. I'm just warning those of you wearing headphones that I may well be coughing and spluttering in your ears, and I apologize beforehand. Now, my original plan was to crack on with the bass build, but I am honestly not sure how well I'm going to do today, and I didn't want to attempt something that complex. Uh, instead of that, I have got my daughter's guitar here, which is 99% of the way finished. In fact, uh, uh, Talitha is currently editing the, uh, the next video in the series, which is on Wednesday, in which in which I used a, a capo trick from, that uh, came from one of you guys, actually, whereby instead of taking all of the strings off so that I can get the scratch plate off and fix the electronics, because I made a mistake on there, you put a capo one and then take the whole neck off. Now, watch the video. It was... Uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun. I got to the point where I took all the bolts off, and, uh, and the guitar stayed in tune and the neck didn't come off and uh, I was able to play without any bolts in the back. So uh, that was fun. Obviously Crimson make very nice tight neck joints. Uh, I've repaired the electronics. I'll let you watch the video to find out what happened there. And uh, everything else is done. I've had to swap out the, the slugs uh, or the, the bolts at least in the pickup because I'd changed those for stainless steel that are non-magnetic and we all thought that that was going to be an issue. So that's done, and that's going live on, on uh, Wednesday. And uh, the Saturday video, which is, uh, which is next, is going to be what I filmed today. So you're going to have a mix of me talking to you as if you're here on a live stream, and I've got the laptop sitting here so that I can uh, see the chat and talk to you guys. And also I'll be doing intros and outros and talking to you as if you're in a video. Uh, now it is bank holiday, uh, my children are off, so they're running around, in fact my, there's, I think there's even going to be other children running around. I've also got a delivery coming at some point, so I'm going to have to run away and uh, uh, literally take a door off the hinges so that uh, this uh, fridge can get uh, delivered. Um, is it, is it wrong that I'm inordinately, inordinately excited that a, a new fridge freezer is coming with an ice maker and chilled water thing coming out the, the, the front. It's like I've finally made it. I have reached actual adulthood. Anyway, here we go. So this is a live stream as well. I do not have anybody running the computers. I'm going to be doing the whole thing myself. Uh, I feel this could potentially be a little bit less stressful. Uh, a little bit less full on. There we go. I don't like using the word stressful uh, willy-nilly, but I am still here to answer your questions. And uh, if you send through a super chat, I will absolutely answer the question. Other times I will run through the chat and uh, just have a quick look for things. I can see the word ADHD. So Richard Littlewood straight away says it's been an age. Uh, it's been an age. I genuinely thought Ben's ADHD had lost momentum on this and it was just stopping the live streams. Uh, I assume, rather than the actual building. Uh, it, it, it's it been three or four weeks of insanity. Uh, a large guitar show, the largest UK guitar show, Makers Central. Uh, I've had two major road trips around the country talking to suppliers and dealers and, and all sorts. It's just been crazy. And I was also trying to figure out how I could reschedule these live builds into a different... Uh, a different schedule, but anyway. Um, we've got Tutum Carmen, Loose and Custom Guitars, Stian TV, Graham B, Black Wraith, who's a member, uh, Dave Dave, 
Johan van Lupi saying that he, he hopes somebody had been out to get me some sugar-free strepsils for my throat. Uh, Beth McKellar, how are you doing, Beth? I assume uh, you guys are okay and good. Uh, Chris Prue, Stephen Costa. Hi, y'all. Terry Love, how are you doing, Terry? Terry says that guitar is looking fantastic now. Jasmine has an instrument to encourage her to learn properly. And she, start, she started learning and then got distracted by her computer. So I think one of the main things for me is that I don't want to push them to do anything specifically anything that um, um, well that's very loose so there we go first thing I need to do is put a cocktail stick in the in the end of this guitar here um, yeah I think that uh, if they want to learn how to play if they want to really get into music and I suspect one or two of them will if I push them to do it it, it would be worse uh, than otherwise. Okay, so let us, well, let's see what we've got here. I've got a plethora of super glues. It's, it's mind-blowing. Uh, yeah, we're trying all sorts. Uh, where possible, I try and avoid importing stuff and uh, while I love the Starbon super glue itself I don't like how their caps disintegrate I do yeah I'm looking for a, a UK based super glue okay so that needs to just sit in there uh, the issue is that uh, the hole goes uh, this hole goes straight through into the cavity then anyway <laughs> Terry Love says, I said the guitar will encourage you, not you. You're absolutely correct. Alrighty, I'm just going to do an intro for this video. We're all recording. Audio is going nicely. Uh, I also only have the lapel mic going without the room mic, which gives better quality video for the edited thing. Uh, if the microphone goes, um, then uh, please shout at me until I turn it on, but I, I generally check. So I'm going to do an intro for the video. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to the final video in my daughter's guitar. This uh, has been, this has been a rather long series and convoluted and complicated and, uh, but it's all good. So it started out with a prototype kit guitar that we made at Crimson a long time ago, and the body was far too heavy. In fact, it was so heavy we didn't sell it, and I took this to a show with me uh, to play around with finishes and stains and, and, and bits and pieces live uh, on stage. And the end result was a relatively pretty guitar. It had a, a, a blue to purple fade and it was, it was cool. My daughter liked the look and said, hmm, hi daddy, how you doing? Here you go, sweetheart. And she sort of, you know, it was very heavy. We have taken it and reduced the weight incredibly. <coughs> lots of holes, lots of cavities, and I'm really, really happy with the 3D effect. You can see I've got a uh, cocktail stick stuck in the end, so uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how the guitar has turned out, but in today's video, in today's video, it's the final one, I'm going to be taking uh, my daughter's name, and creating a Fender style logo in 3D uh, aluminium. So I'm going to take a sheet of, of metal and essentially it's half of the inlay process. It's cutting out uh, the, the outlay, I suppose, and then we're going to affix it to the top of the guitar, polish it, mm, polish it up, and then affix it to the guitar and have a pretty cool looking thing. And it is the last little bit. After, that is, get the uh, strap button fitted properly. So, on we go. Okay, 
So, accelerator. I'm not entirely sure. So I, I'm, I'm just going to leave that for now. I haven't used the accelerator. I haven't used the Starbond accelerator with this finish before, and I don't know if it will damage the finish. At this stage, I'm not going to risk it. So there we go. Cut the excess off, and I'll leave that to cure for a while. Fret end cutters are really useful, actually, for a myriad, myriad tasks. Okay. So I was talking about Starbond, and for some reason, and I've never had this with any other superglue, the cap, the material that their caps is made out of, uh, disintegrates and it goes off after a, a relatively short space of time. It's, it literally starts disintegrating. It is, it's a real issue for me, actually. The, the super glue is great. The packaging looks amazing, but mm, I don't know. I'm not a fan, which, which is so sad. It's the sort of thing that uh, yeah, only comes up uh, after you've been using something for a long time. Okay. Here we go. So what I have here is a very blank and very boring headstock. And here is, here is the logo uh, that Bear created for me. I've asked for various different sizes from 45 millimeters to, uh, to 60, and I need to figure out Ooh, and we've also got solid. I need to figure out which one works. I think it's going to be the 50. So let's just cut that out. Oh, there we go. Graham B's asking me did I put the uh, screws back in, uh, and I assume you're asking about the pickup. Yes, I did. Uh, I had, and this is going to be showing up in Wednesday's video. I, this is a beautiful, very early pickup made by uh, Matt over at uh, House of Tone. He's a fantastic, incredibly knowledgeable um, pickup maker in the UK. I love his work. And uh, I thought it would be fun to put hex inlays on. But, uh, but in the end, but in the end what happened was uh, they were uh, stainless steel, non-magnetic, and it didn't sound good. Uh, I like that. That's 50. Let's see what 55, let's see what 55 looks like. So yes, the result with the the result with the pickups was that while the guitar still worked, it was somewhat muffled because you've got the the screws and the, the magnetic slugs. So uh, uh, yeah, the magnetic slugs were still picking up, and it was still a field, but the guitar sounded muted and almost fuzzy. It was weird, but. Uh, Anyway, it's one of those things. Oh, no, that's too big. Isn't it amazing what a difference five mil will, will do to the proceedings? So now the other thing is that's a very straight. That's a great big straight line, whereas that isn't. So I'm wondering about changing it in that way. Okay, uh, Terry Love's asking if the uh, Jasmine logo should be in the shape of her signature. I don't think she has a signature. <coughs> okay.
Okay, uh, Adam just remembers telling me the lapel microphone is catching on my shirt. That's a good point. Thank you very much. Let's uh, put that there. Hopefully that improves things. Hmm. So one of the beautiful things about the extension to the workshop that I'm doing down here is that I'm going to have uh, the bulk of my library uh, of guitar books and guitar reference books actually available to me while I'm building. And I'll be able to see a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just quickly having a look at the, the Fender logo on a headstock. It actually is straight. I suppose it's just where it is. That's it, so the J. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Here we go. So I'm going to take the logo, the smaller logo, and I'm going to use the J from one of the bigger logos. And that sort of gives me the effect I want. Maybe not that one. Maybe the 55. It's a subtle difference. But yeah, that, that is closer to the Fender logo uh, in my mind. Cool. And there's going to be no jiggery pokery. There's going to be no messing around with creating curves, etc. It's going to make this a lot easier. Now, <coughs> one of my favourite tools is masking tape. I use this for absolutely everything. So that gives us the effect we want, gives us the look we want, while, uh, yeah, it should be relatively easy to, uh, to achieve. Okay, now the other thing is that I'm going to be uh, stopping to talk to the, uh, to the live stream on a sort of semi-regular basis. Uh, we don't have any super chats come through yet, so uh, that's all good, but uh, in general, uh, I'll stop and go through the, the questions. I do, I really do enjoy interacting with you guys. Yeah, it's part of, uh, it's part of what keeps this whole thing going. Uh, I just need to find a, a medium between getting the video filmed and uh, doing that. Now, the, the glue will have cured in the end of the guitar, so let's just get this back in place. <clears throat> now, if this goes well, it's not going to push... Okay, so it's grabbed, it is not pushing the cocktail stick into the guitar. Uh, the next stage, if this didn't work out, there we go, would be a threaded insert in there and a machine bolt. Okay. The guitar, the guitar can be put away somewhere else. Uh, Terry Love's coming with a super chat, said, place your bets here, how long can Ben hold off commenting? I mean, 12, 20, less than 30 seconds. Okay, 
And I really am. I'm really, really happy with how this guitar has ended up sounding. Uh, and feeling it just feels, it feels great. Um, oh, that was it. There we go. So I'm not happy with the finish. Uh, from a distance, it looks good. And I suppose that's fine. In my early days, that was a prerequisite because, uh, you know, when you got up close, you, you wouldn't buy the guitar. But um, <clears throat> the lacquer that we've been using, uh, we had changed to a different supplier of lacquer. And uh, this was done during that process. I'm not happy with it. We've now gone back to the original supplier and actually found an even higher build version of that. So this is a little bit soft and um, it's not ideal for guitar building. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. I'm just going to take this and uh, find somewhere in the mess and carnage. I tell you, this entire workshop is just, it's very distractingly messy. But anyway. Now, before we go on, uh, there is a Jasmine Guitar Company. Won't the guitar be confused with them? Only if it was going to be sold, which is what Richard Littlewood said below. Um, uh, what Dremel trick would be the recommendation for routing inlays? This is from uh, Ricochet D11. Uh, I use... Uh, we tend to use 0.6 millimeter cutters as general for for most fine inlays. Uh, Tanya is in the house, everybody. How's it going? Okay. Oh, you wondrous human being of awesomeness. Got a few mugs here. Uh, there's more than a few mugs. Uh, there's only two. That's only a few. It's all good. Uh, there we go. Say hi, Tanya. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, Marshall Levine's in. Good morning, everybody. I'm still not quite awake because it's only 6.18 here in East Tennessee and still consuming my first cup of coffee for the day. I'm loving the transformation of Jasmine's guitar. So am I and so are we. And thank you for joining us. Uh, sort of pre-8 o'clock in the morning for me is just unconscionable. Pre-7 doesn't even bear thinking about. Okay, so so yes, uh, now those inlay bits that I tend to use, I get them from, they're generally sold on your massive multinational online websites of choice as PCB router cutters. Uh, and you can get them very, very inexpensively. Uh, Dremel do also do various sizes, but they tend to be on the larger size. So, you know, one millimeter and more, and that's not... That's not quite small enough. Anyway, time for an inlay jig. These things are very simple, but make life so much easier. Now, a jeweler will just have this top section and it clamps off to the front of their bench, and that's it. I prefer having one that sits in your end vise. I prefer having one that sits in your end vise. I prefer having one that sits in your end vise. And uh, it allows you to work at uh, various heights. Now I work standing up for the most part. I rarely sit at my bench. That's just me. A lot of people sit at their benches, but I, I just don't work that way. Okay, so we've got this. Put it in nice and tight. And then, uh, I'm going to be using a relatively small vintage uh, jeweler's saw. Uh, now this is one that came out of the vintage tool shop. 
don't really like the feel of that handle. Hold on one second as I digress. <coughs> Whoops. It's dropping stuff. Yep, that'll do. Honestly, as much of the process of building is to do with being happy with the tools and being comfortable in your own skin and working area, from the height of the workbench to the, to the level of the jeweler's uh, jig and, and all of that. And um, literally just the feel of this handle was a little bit off-putting. If I'm going to be doing this for a while, let's uh, make sure it's comfy. Okay, excuse me, I have a phone call. This is probably a delivery driver. So, there we go. Adam? Yeah, how you doing? Fantastic. I'm currently, well, my wife is up at the house um, we need to pull it down the uh, the side passageway, so I'm going to have to take a door off the hinges for you. Um, that's the one, yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll be there to help. It's, it's no worries. Excellent. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. If he does that, the man is getting a tip. So there we go. This is the water-based guitar finishing oil. And I'm just going through and uh, there we go. All right, Toby D says, Ben, uh, talking of super glue, how are you getting on with the CA glue you had gifted at Makers? I use Glue Boost, but I'm also keen for a UK based super glue that is any good. Okay, so uh, uh, it's really good stuff. Came in a really cool package as well. I can't find anything. Um, now the problem is, as I said on the live stream yesterday, it's funny how everybody's asking me about this actually. Uh, it just does show that there's a, uh, there's a market for good UK superglue. So here we go. Now we've been running tests at Crimson. This is uh, O3A is the stuff. We've been running tests at Crimson. It comes in, you know, good quantity, quantities, you've got the black, etc. What I'm not too much a fan of is the thin is incredibly thin and the medium is a little bit thinner than I would like for a medium. So the viscosity, I personally like somewhere between the thick and the, uh, and the medium as my medium really. But we've been, uh, we've been playing around with it. I here in my studio have not. Uh, I think I used it once because I haven't, uh, I haven't been in here. I haven't been doing stuff. So uh, yeah, it's uh, not ideal. But uh, yeah, the, the stuff that I used was absolutely fine. Okay, that'll do a digression. Tutankhamen asks me to call it the defender. Unfender. X, no. <laughs> Uh, Ricochet D11 uh, asks, have I missed something? What was wrong with Starbond? There's nothing wrong with Starbond, the glue. I really like the glue. I really like the uh, non-pressurized container that the uh, accelerator comes in. I, I really hate the fact that I have to masking tape together the, 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 the cap. 
caps. There we go. I forgot how to speak. Because whatever material these, is made out, these are made out of disintegrates. Uh, after three or four months, they just fall apart. And uh, you end up with glue going absolutely everywhere. Uh, now they do ship with replacement caps, etc. But it's just, it's not ideal. Anyway, so I'm just setting my saw up and we'll be good. I've got a super chat here from Austeriman. It says, Ben, a digression. Uh, ben, a digression. The guitar you made at Maker Central, what was the finish you applied? It didn't look like oil. Cheers, Rick. Um, Rick, no, it was not guitar finishing oil. It was uh, our wipe on guitar finishing lacquer. So it goes on very, very quick. It cures very, very quick. And you can actually get a pretty, a, a relatively great finish with it. Um, higher gloss, higher protecting. And we're ready. But uh, yeah, it's got a different feel to the oil and a different look as well. Personally, the best way, in my opinion, the best look is to hit the guitar, hit the natural wood with something like shellac to bring out that golden colour and then go over it with, uh, with a lacquer. But uh, here we go. Okay, camera two. Camera two appears to have lost focus. What are you doing, camera two? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's move this as well. <coughs> okay. Now, when I came back from Maker Central, I had to uh, move all the cameras around and camera four, the overhead one here, ended up being uh, in a completely different place. And it's more likely now to, uh, to get the top of my head with an unfinished tattoo. So I apologize in advance for that. Sweet tea guitars in the house. Kevin Harvey just picked up a Hobbies frame saw for one pound at a junk shop. Need to put a new handle on it and the blades should turn up today. Fantastic saws. Some of the hobby ones have a, this is a, yes, I did that. Uh, this is a Hobbies one and it's got a, a cam mechanism here whereby you can tighten the blade it's really cool it's really cool up until the point where you're sitting here working away you break your blade and the cam mechanism hits you in the bottom of the chin which has happened to me a couple of times uh, but uh, with that public safety warning Okay. I actually don't have that much masking tape holding this down. I should have cut away a lot more of the material. So let's just put another piece on here. And I may well need to uh, come in. Now, the, an alternative would have been cutting through and marking it out with the blade. 
Um, we'll see. I, I, I don't like doubling up on work if I can help it. Yeah. Now let's do this properly. I'm going to I'm going to redo this. Uh, I'm going to cut away all the excess and uh, prepare this properly. So this uh, that top section I've just applied. That's all done. Away the excess. So all of this is going to be joined apart from the F and the A. And to be honest, I'm going to take away. Am I? Yeah, I'm going to take that joint out. I don't like that. Now the first part is going to have to actually be drilling the holes uh, in the J and the A and mm, not the S, that's not connected. So it's just two, two, two drill holes to do and we can move on. Come on. And even with material as... Hmm, I'm sorry. Camera 2 is really annoying. Even with a material as common and uh, readily available and inexpensive as aluminium, I do try and keep it as close to the edge as possible. Okay. Okay, so uh, Duncan Bister says, catch me up. I thought this was going to be a base build video. I am not up for a base build today. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not feeling very well. Uh, I'm feeling a lot worse than I thought I would be at this stage. Uh, I thought I'd basically recovered, but uh, uh, no, I did the live stream last night and it proved that uh, I wasn't up for it. So I'm doing, I'm finishing Jasmine's guitar off and then uh, if I am up for it, there may well be uh, other stuff going on. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the Ukraine baritone needs to be completed. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Paul Needs is in the house. Terry, 
Uh, Kevin Harvey says you could use magic tape or print it onto self-adhesive paper. That works, but uh, involves me messing around with printers and uh, printers don't like me. All right. Let's see. Nope, I need to drill a hole. That's what I need to do. Where is my lovely little... Okay. So we've got a little pin vise here. Oh, <laughs> do you want a digression? Yeah, I'll show you uh, something I picked up the other day. Oftentimes, <clears throat> oftentimes it's not the tool necessarily that is incredible. It's how it's stored. And this is just a gorgeous little set of drills, drill bits. I've got a couple of uh, pin vices and bits and pieces. But somebody made this for these, handwritten 116, 764, etc. Just love it. Anyway, a digression. Another digression. Is anybody counting? How many are we? Uh, how many are we at at this point? Uh, so my my power drills don't take a small enough bit. So how small do we go with this baby? Yeah, not even. That's one point two mil or so. So. Uh, there we go. I need to restore one of my other old drills and uh, see what we're doing. Uh, it's all good. Guitar says, uh, going good, mate. Looks like you don't sleep either. Spike, if I slept six hours more than normal, I wouldn't get up till lunchtime. Uh, I don't sleep. Nobody sleeps. Sleep? When you have a workshop? Okay. So I'm currently un... Oh, come on, that's camera two. Camera three is what I want. Camera three will not focus. Oh, dag damn it. <sighs> Fine. Let's find another way. So that was a little uh, <clears throat> carbide drill bit, and carbide is very, very brittle. Okay, that's too big. have something in here. Yeah, I 
all of these are a millimeter or more. Isn't it annoying? When you're not on top of your game, that's when stuff goes wrong and you can't really sort out the issues in your head. Alright, so here's another pin vise and what I'm going to do is uh, install install the, uh, the drill bit in the, in the pin vise that is normally supposed to be used by hand. Really. And I'm going to take that off and put this in a drill. It's actually quite nice and centered. Ideal. I'm just going to drill straight through into this. There we go. Okay, solved. All right, give me questions, people. Daho Mike uh, used to put small bits in the Dremel when he was repairing ski edges once upon a time. Uh, it was more like using a dentist's drill than trying to use a large power drill. They can break those, so PPE. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you go there. A lot of people talk about retirement. Rob, uh, Fourth Avenue Guitars uh, has a has a a week off from the day job and he's already procrastinating here on our channel. Well, bad news, mister. Uh, <clears throat> I'm probably going to be live streaming tomorrow as well. Uh, I am feeling a lot better today and I do want to, well, actually I need to finish the, uh, the baritone. I need to finish the baritone. So I may well uh, do that next week. Uh, sorry, Tuesday, tomorrow. Okay, everybody, I am going to leave you looking at my wondrous workshop for five minutes while I go and sort out the, uh, uh, this fridge that's, uh, that's arriving. So please, uh, in, entertain yourselves. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put the still on, actually. There we go. Back in a tick.
black muted the mic, I apologize. Uh, okay, there we go. So uh, uh, here's a comment from a uh, super chat from Terry Love. He says, dentist's drills sound scary, but they do not suffer from vibrations. Uh, so I've seen model engineers use them because of that. And yes, I would love a proper professional dentist drill set up. Uh, and there are also various um, professional engraving systems that uh, I, I would love to own. I would love to own. Now, part of my workshop extension here is that I'm, I'm going all out. I, I distracted myself for a few years with trying to find hobby, a hobby or two outside of guitar building and outside of making and I got into watches and all that sort of stuff and in the end guitars are my thing and tools and making are my thing so I'm gonna this workshop is gonna be broader and bigger and cooler there we go Richard Littlewood says, Ben, you have said nothing to us this whole time. <sighs> um, I'm assuming that's just while the microphone was off. Okay, so. that this saw is just too small for general guitar building stuff. That's, uh, that's annoying. Okay, fine. So where I'm at, I'm just going to uh, put some tension on it, get that blade tightened up. I'm going to cut Yeah, I'm going to cut around the whole thing. I am... I'm getting rid of that section of the A, but I'm going to join the J to the A, because I do want this to be in one piece. Now, it's incredibly important that you have a good quality blade. <laughs> in fact the bet here should be how many blades will Ben go through today uh, and it's going to be a few uh, minimum so it looks like that box has been delivered and is right where I don't want it in between where the door is and where the door needs to go so that's going to be fun uh, but hey it is what it is. Okay. Paul Cook says, make watches. I do not have the brain power for that. I really did. We, we seriously considered doing something like that, uh, utilizing our CNC machines. And uh, what I wanted to do was make new cases for vintage movements and then have a, a watchmaker working with us to, to put them together and, and sell them. But yeah, no, let's not do that. Although my watch build is going to happen soon. No. Okay, um, just so that I can concentrate, I'm going to shoot off quickly and uh, get this door done. Uh, if you guys hit me with questions, then I will uh, I will go through them. Uh, here we go. Frankie Chan says, is it possible or dangerous to try and carve a Les Paul style set neck into more of an access prophecy style neck heel so that it looks more like a neck through? Check out... Oh, dag -nam it. Gibson have done this for a particular artist whose name I've just completely forgotten. Alex Lifeson. Alex Lifeson's Les Paul has got that. Now, the 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 when I realized huh, I did an Alex Lifeson mod on a Gibson Les Paul, and I cut through and did all of that carve, and this is where the dangerous bit comes through. Uh, there was a two or a three millimeter gap between the back of the neck uh, tenon and the bottom of the mortise? 
the entire back was floating free. There was the only glue holding this neck in place was on the sides and underneath the fretboard. Mind blowingly bad, but uh, but yes, uh, you can do that absolutely as long as you do the joint properly. I would say. Uh, I am shooting off. I will be back shortly. All right, all good. <sighs> Except for the general state of my lungs. <coughs> Life is good. All righty. Uh, failure. Failure, spelled F-E-Y-L-Y-A, uh, is a new member. Welcome to All That Jazz. Thank you for your support and uh, yeah. Uh, welcome to a bunch of uh, extra content and fun stuff. Now, I'm going to cut out the outline of this uh, whole inlay and uh, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, questions. Ian M, what are the odds on me forgetting the mic again? This time it's all sorted. I didn't forget the mic last time, I just didn't realize it was muted there. Um, my excuse and I'm sticking with it. Blade tallies. What speed should I set my Dremel to cut my fretboard for inlays? I tend to go fast, very fast, as fast as it'll go really, and and then I move the, the tool very slowly. Is it, uh, I've done that one. Anonymous Botch, I love that name. Darwin Stern says, I ever saw that size, and yes, they're definitely too small. 
Anonymous Botch says, Ben, you are one of those lucky people whose hobby is their job. That is, that is true. Um, although everything, everything, it can get to be a problem. Uh, so yeah, it's just one of those things. Even with something as cool as this, if you let it, it can become a job. Saul Good Guitars said he nearly had a trampoline hit his workshop last night. It flew over the fence. Ouchie. But hey, you got a new trampoline. Bonus. Okay. Now, if I start... Yeah, that should do. We'll see. We might need to reverse, but... Uh... Dang, damn it! One millimeter in, everybody. I'm not using this uh, saw. That's sad because uh, I really like how it looks. Anyway, changing over to this one means that I can get those uh, those cavities done first. In you go. Now the issue with this one is that I do have to uh, use a pair of pliers or my Leatherman to to tighten them up. They tend to slip. Uh, Paul needs Paul. How you doing? Channel sub query. Uh, do you get the same extras on this channel as on the main one at the same time? Yes, absolutely. So with regards, if you are a member. I would thoroughly suggest you become a member on this channel, not because uh, it makes any difference to what you get, but it's just that during the live streams, uh, your name flashes up as being a member and you get the green and the, um, basically you're part of the cool club. Uh, but yes, uh, all extra content goes, is, is the same across the board and also um, Patreon. But uh, there we go. So I, I would suggest cancelling your membership on the main channel and uh, joining in over here. Let's do some cutting, shall we? Now the trick... I do a combination of moving the, the saw and the workpiece at the same time. This is not going well. Ah, <sighs> uh, okay. I'm trying out some new blades. And I'm, I'm very aware that this is going to sound like an excuse. I'm trying out some new blades. And uh, let's have a look at these. Can you see how these have got that very blued effect? They look like blued screws uh, on a high-end watch or whatever. Um, I think that these are, have been heat treated too much and they're too brittle. I do not normally break blades every two to four millimeters. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Put them in with the teeth facing down. Oh, Dave Dave has just joined as a member in all that jazz. Thank you very much, Dave Dave. And uh, welcome, welcome to the club. Okay. So you've got that there. And then I push it up against the workbench. 
lock that in place and lock that. Let's see. Of course, I. <sighs> Definitely can't do that with the overhead camera because I want to be over the blade, uh, and this is how you uh, keep everything nice and square. And the next time I break a blade, I will cut out that central section. I'm holding the back of the blade against the cut that I've already made. I'm pulling backwards on it, and now I'm starting to move forward again. Let's move to, so we've got a, oh, no, two stuck. Ah, fine, you don't want to go that far, we'll be done. I need to redesign the entire camera setup in this, uh, in this place. Um, BB Guitars is also, has also just joined as a member. Welcome, welcome. With the new, with the new setup, and with everything uh, working better even, uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, creating even more exclusive content. There will be there will be live streams that are exclusive for um, for members, um, and uh, yeah, just all sorts of extra stuff. There we go. All right. Oh, I also want a small, I want a brush. No, that's not a small enough brush. I'm going very gentle. There's no rush. 
There's no rush at all. Now one of the beautiful things about aluminium is that I'm not worried about this stuff um, snapping. If I was cutting this same thing out of mother of pearl or abalone, uh, I would have to be even more gentle. And I would also be a lot more worried about the uh, support underneath it. I'm keeping my blade fairly close to the edge, but with, uh, with Mother of Pearl I would want to have the, uh, the entire thing supported and I would probably be cutting inside that slot or making a new slot. think I'm going to carry on cutting I was tempted to uh, to tape up the cut that I've just made but uh, let's see let's see how it goes And then he broke a blade there. So I'm holding the masking tape down with my fingernail. And I'm going to ignore the dot over the eye for now.
it's only at this stage that I'm starting to think about laser cutters. Oops, I just threw the brush on the floor. This would be the most annoying time for me to break a blade. Right about here. Woohoo! Was that whole thing out of focus? Okay, so I've got... I'm happy with the hole there. I just need to cut this away. And we're done. I'm gonna turn off the autofocus on this camera. Okay. All right, everyone. So I'm just putting the little blade in. Now at this point, the inlay is a lot lighter and uh, it's easier to, uh, to do this. The, the thing is, if I was doing Mother of Pearl, I would 100% want to cut these this smaller hole before I cut the outline out so that it was properly supported uh, before I go. But here we are. Okay, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to answer a bunch of questions in a minute. And uh, we'll go on, even that's not in focus. No, come on then. Look at that. So, so that last blade did 99.5% of the work without any issues. So uh, maybe it was all down to my technique earlier. 
those two blade snapping. Uh, now it does occur to me, <laughs> it does occur to me that that's absolutely awesome, uh, that I could at this point adjust the curve because it's aluminium and it could, um, uh, it would just move, that would be absolutely fine. So if we like the look of that, we can do that in a bit. Now it is time for some questions and then I'm going to hit, I'm going to go with needle files and tidy up around the outside edge and uh, we'll see what, what happens. I, I kind of want to, you know that tube writing where everything's 3D and it's all rounded and, uh, and beautiful. I actually want to do that with this. I want to make this look like it's been extruded out of a, uh, a tube of paint or something. Uh, so here we go. But in the meantime, this is going to turn into a, uh, uh, a mini Q&A for five minutes or so. So uh, let's see. When did I last take? Set them off. We'll see. Okay. Remember, super chats 100% will be answered. Uh, if not, it's just a question of if I actually see the question or not. Paul Needs says, check out the Parker fly neck joint. Shows what can be done with wood. Most Parker flies, or many Parker flies, are done are carbon fiber, actually, but yes. Um, I have made many, many, many. Uh, guitars with very minimal neck joints and they're absolutely fine. Uh, Zach Ellison prefaced his comment with the word coffee, which is a very good point. I am in need. Uh, hi Ben, I've thought about this build for a while. You silver painted, there's mirror paint, comes out like a mirror called Molotov Liquid Chrome. Comes in pen, but open and use airbrush light mist. I need to get me some of that. So I haven't been... Thanks, Zach. Uh, I've been meaning to get set up with airbrush here for a long time, to the point that I've had a compressor, a vintage compressor, uh, up on the wall looking beautiful for a number of years, just so that I... It's right there looking at me. I will get this set up and uh, start playing. Adam Dutton says, guitar is funny in that the initial effort to get anywhere feels quite high, but you can unlock a lot once you get over that first hump and be happy being a mediocre guitarist. Uh, I feel the same way about uh, uh, Luthery, to be honest. It's actually not that difficult to put together a kit guitar. It's not that difficult to, um, to actually build something in this day and age where you can, you have access to pre-slotted fretboards you have access to really good quality kits um, in in the 70s when were the first kit proper kit guitars actually uh, available to the public i don't know that's uh, something i've never considered before uh, what size blade and tpi were you using on the logo that's from steve tuttle guitars hi steve uh, I use exclusively three slash O and four slash O blades. Um, I tend to prefer the coarser ones, but uh, yeah, the TPI is it's in there. Uh, uh, very fine, but uh, not that fine. Uh, specifically with uh, uh, with aluminiums and things like this. But even with mother of pearls, the larger the blade, the more likely you are to snap the material as you cut. But if if you're careful. And then, as I suggested while I was making that cut, you pull black back so the black oh, you pull back so the back of the blade is touching the edge as you tr sort of traverse around a corner, and that uh, very gently cuts things without snapping either the blade or the substrate that you're cutting. Ooh, Andrew Clayton, a very timely question it says, uh, "Do you sell timber for tops?" I uh, can't see anything on the Crimson website. If not, dare I ask you for a recommendation for a UK supplier? Uh, we are... Let us know what you are after. Literally, uh, my road trip on Monday and Tuesday last week was all about 
setting up a proper uh, route of supply for us to regularly be able to supply some sublime tops. I've got a lot of quilted maple in stock and a lot of flamed maple or flamed sycamore in stock as well. So uh, that's all going to be going live very soon. But if, there's, uh, if you're after something in particular, drop us an email and we will sort through it and give you a shout. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I'm leaking people. It's not ideal. Uh, Mark Milligan says, I had my question on laminated necks sparked an idea in you. Uh, can you share? Ever thought about keeping a notebook in your pocket for these spontaneous ideas? The notebook is right here, uh, and it's too full of ideas uh, already. Um, wood turners do a lot of work where they'll um, make a blank that has been cut at multiple different angles and multiple different things and then they re-glue it and then move it and then recut and then put more wood in and cut and glue and I thought that uh, it could be fun to make an neck like that. It could also be very dangerous uh, if the joints aren't great or if the wood is not equally dried so probably not actually a good idea but it would be visually stunning. Uh, and that was on the uh, live stream that was on the live stream yesterday. Matt Lang just says, I'm regularly disturbed at how long ago the 70s were. Yes. It's the 80s for me, but yes. Uh, Paul Needs says, Parkerfly myth number one, they're clad with carbon fiber, wood core and strength underneath. Um, yes, but the, uh, the, the carbon fiber on the, the external carbon fiber is what gives 99% of the strength, in, in my opinion. Um, they use particularly or used particularly uh, lightweight woods, uh, cedars, etc., which would not normally be strong enough for a neck joint. Uh, Anthony Cunliffe says, uh, do you think time permitting with your luthier skills you could build a watch housing and strap out of wood easily? Yes. Um, I wouldn't want to because funnily enough, um, it's yeah, there's a lot of budget watches that look like that out nowadays. And uh, um, although, just for a challenge, making a cool bracelet, yeah. I mean, it's something that absolutely could be done. This is the beautiful thing about guitar building, is you have got so much scope for... The skills that I've got through guitar building can be applied to any number any one of a number of other um, trades or arts or crafts, as it were. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, Nick Jones, good idea. Abalone dot on the eye for contrast. Good question. Uh, De Real Media says the first kit guitars came in the form of trees, I think. Oh, sandwich. Thank you, my darling. Perfect timing. Questions and, uh, and lunch. Okay. Bad thing about keeping an idea notebook is one has to go back and read the notes or they are often never, never land as if they were not written down. My issue, um, my, my honest issue is that I feel like shit. <laughs> my honest issue is that when I, as somebody with ADHD and a multiplicity of other issues. When I write something down in a to-do list, my brain is saying, woohoo, you've achieved something, it's done, it's dusted, it's sorted, yay. And then I go do something else, and it's a, it's a big issue. But uh, anyway, what can you do? Uh, Matt Lang says, NH35 music movement for watches is about 25 quid. This is the beautiful thing. Uh, Inky Guitar says, Hi Ben, I burned my guitar a couple of days ago, uh, but now the inlaid pick guard I made for it no longer fits. Uh, any idea of why? I sent a pick to the stream email. Um, literally, you've shrunk everything a, a little bit uh, or made it slightly larger by burning away material. One of those two things. Um, yeah, that it's unfortunately one of those things. Wood moves, uh, especially when it's on fire. Okay. OK, 
Okay, Dave, Dave, who is a member, says, hmm, I do that with to-do lists too. Uh, as does Ian M. So in the end, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Well, the solution is, I'm afraid, knowing that there is an issue. Once we know there's an issue, we can work our way around it. Uh, it's just taken me till I was this year's old uh, to figure that out. I'm 41. Ha! I had a birthday a few weeks ago. Completely forgot about that. Um, there we go. All right. Frankie Chan, I'm going to answer your question quickly and then uh, I'm going to munch on this because I'm starting to feel a bit bad uh, while the camera will be muted and I'll do some work. Uh, but there we go. Um, Frankie Chan, rolled fingerboard edges. Do you do them or like them? I can't recall seeing if you do, if you roll them or not. Uh, or if you like the plate in feel or the crisp edge on a newly built guitar. I do like rolled fingerboard edges. In fact, it's just part of the thing that I don't actually generally talk about. Uh, I don't do it to the same extent that somebody relicking a, a guitar to make it feel like something made in the 50s or 60s would. But uh, every time I, I do the fret end uh, work, it is rolled over lightly to make it more comfortable. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> So there we go. Uh, I'm looking for Luther for Bills because somebody said fantastic punnery. And I can't find it. There we go. Okay, anyway, it is what it is. So, uh, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to mute my microphone. Oh no, there we go. Up. Okay. That microphone is on, so I'm not going to be chewing in your in your ear, and then I can answer some questions. Uh, it's all good. Ooh, chicken salad. Frankie Chan says, thanks Ben, as you said, you never really talk about it, so I wasn't sure if you did it or not. No worries. Uh, the, artful <laughs> the Artful Todger uh, had my ADHD diagnosed three weeks ago, started the drugs that last week. Seriously. Uh, I, I'm well done. I can't believe that this might be how neurotypical minds all work. Great job. I haven't got the drugs yet, so I went through the diagnosing process with my GP who then said, okay, fine, dude, yo, <laughs> you've ticked every single box here more so than most people ever do. Like, you had 30 questions and, and you were way off the scale on every single one. But uh, I now then need to go to a, um, a psychologist or one of those things to then get the drugs. And the next appointment due is uh, or available is sometime in September, I think. So I've got the diagnosis, which is helping because I know, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how a neurotypical person works. I might not like it, but we'll see. Is it better for you? Stephen Clark. Uh, I have a Martin backpacker that has a sinking bridge or top. What is a remedy you would use to bring it back to playing form? This is an interesting one. Uh,
basically it, it's it's saying I, I can't think of an easy uh, way out of this you don't want to just put a higher saddle on there although that would increase your the playability for a while uh, but you you need to go in and add extra bracing underneath because obviously whatever they've done with this particular top it's not enough uh, so you could put lighter strings on there and a higher saddle as a quick fix but in reality you're going to need to take Yeah, you're going to have to take the top off and do major surgery. With an instrument of this budget, I would probably say just get a new one. Uh, although, I, I would actually see see if you can get it uh, get a refund and replacement. You, you may well be lucky. Martin have fairly good customer service, uh, I've been told. Goth Rider Creation says, Ben, you have said so many times that balsa wood is not an option for guitar building. As I am making my whole guitar out of it, how screwed am I? Uh, I assume very, but... I mean, if you use multi-laminate neck joint, even if it's all balsa wood, just with a little bit of veneer in there, you could be okay. It's all to do with the neck joint and the stability. Uh, and the tone, come to think of it. Uh, carbon fibre, stiffening rods, truss rods, dual action truss rod, etc. Uh, a solid fretboard. All of these things will help, but I think that in the end you're going to have a very warm, very thuddy, very sort of fuzzy kind of a sound if you're being serious. Uh, now, I have, I've seen people clad balsa style woods, uh, gelutong is the thing, J-E-L-L-U-T-O-N-G. Very similar wood, not quite as soft, but very lightweight and soft. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen people use that and clad it in carbon fiber and it's been fine. Also, guitar, carbon fibre rods to stiffen its body. That's from Terry Love. Uh, I don't think stiffening the body would be necessary. I do think that it should be strong enough. If you make it out of multiple pieces of balsa wood glued together, just the glue joints add strength and stability. Uh, the issue is... Yeah, all sorts. Many, 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 many issues. And I'm not thinking straight right now. Uh, the Artful Todger said, yep, private prescription initially, 100 quid a month. But once you're settled on the drugs, you get handed off to a GP and pay standard prescription. This is the thing. I couldn't get an appointment with the uh, with the private people uh, to see me anytime soon. Maybe I need to put more effort into that. Somebody's asking about uh, young students, I think. Richard Littlewood, yes, so go private for the first six months and then you get the prescriptions from the NHS after six months, apparently, is what I've been told.
Stephen Clark's 32 and says he's just started his professional Luthier career. That is awesome. Matt Lang is asking me what my favourite sandwich is. I mean, hamburgers are sandwiches, right? All right, fantastic. Thank you, the Artful Todger. I will give them a call. How about a balsa maple balsa sandwich uh, with carbon in the balsa? That does not sound very tasty, but I think we're currently talking about uh, guitars rather than sandwiches. Yes, I think that could be nice. I just don't think that such a soft wood is a good idea in a neck. I just don't, no matter what you do. <laughs> Have a good day, Marsha. Okay, alrighty, I'm, I'm nearly there. I'm oh, sorry guys, I'm leaking and I've got a headache and uh, this is probably not the best of uh, days to do a live stream. But anyway, it is what it is. Frankie Chan says, hamburgers are sandwiches the way that cereal is soup. Paul Cook says, favourite sandwich, the next one, which I absolutely agree. <laughs> and David Gunter says, yes, hamburger equals sandwich. I love your channel and uh, I appreciate your support. Spike is asking me if I'm uh, procrastinating on the bass. Uh, yes, very much so. I'm. I'm really not well. Um, I've got. I've got man flu, and I am not currently up for. For the complexity of actually finishing something I care about. Whereas uh, I feel entirely up to doing a simple. A bit of inlay work. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, Terry Love, coming with a super chat. Thanks very much, Terry. Uh, <coughs> MVP today. Well, I'm dropping stuff. Uh, curving that logo by bending, I'd be worrying about it snapping as it's only aluminium. Uh, I would only be putting in a very, very light curve um, if I did. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that uh, because it's aluminium. If I was putting more, then, yeah, we got, we got an issue. Okay, now... Food makes everything better. We, uh, it reminds me of uh, Orson, who is now 
12 years old, 11 years old, nearly 12, something like that. Uh, and uh, as a young child, I watched him run into a fence post as sort of a three-year-old or four-year-old and uh, just full on thwack, tears everywhere. And, uh, you know, of course, mommy freaks out and, uh, and I'm trying to keep things calm. I'm like, okay, what can we do? And he's like, through the tears and the pain, and <laughs> food will make it better. And uh, he's still, he is 100% if we're out. Oh, can we go to a restaurant? It's, it's uh, oh, etc. It's very much food orientated. And, uh, and I absolutely love it. And I agree, food will make it better. Okay, a uh, couple of questions here. We had a bunch of super chats, so I'm going to do these and then we're going to crack on with the logo. So uh, Vulcan Essen, hey man, how you doing? Says, uh, hey Ben, how much do you consider the height of pots when designing a body? Recently, I barely managed to fit a push-pull in the cavity with a recessed cover, i.e. the backplate. You had to, you had a recessed backplate. Oftentimes, I've ended up with a solid timber backplate that I've had to then carve away. In fact, you will see, uh, you'll see that quite a lot. It's something that I have to think about. I like thin guitars, uh, and oftentimes, I just don't have the room for push-pulls. And I will have to go with uh, with toggles or something like that to solve the issue. Uh, Sweet Tea Guitars is coming with another super chat. Thanks very much, uh, Todd. Appreciate it, man. It says, so you have a load of quilt. Uh, I'm really glad you said that. That changes the next box. Peace and love. Um, I love how I know PNL now means peace and love. Um, yes, 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 and yes, and yes, yes. I found a UK company that has a bunch of quilt and we're partnering up to uh, uh, to resell it uh, I've uh, never nobody in the UK has this much quilt now we've got probably 30 or 40 tops worth at the moment and, and much of it is fairly prosaic stuff but there is some really nice stuff coming and uh, it's going to be very interesting we are yeah I'm going to be going into wood supply in a big way because I love it so much. I really do. Anyway, let's have a look at this, shall we? Now, this is a super tiny super tiny little file. Hmm. I wonder how I can carve this. might be better. This is one of those things where I know I can do it. I just don't necessarily know how. Back of that's uh, not abrasive, so I can run that off my. Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do here quickly is uh, I'm just going to polish the back end of that 
with a oh with some diamond there we go okay so this is an easy lap diamond hone and stone Leveling beam. Oh, there we go. I tell you, leveling beam, even if you have no interest in building guitars, a leveling beam is something you should have in your workshop. They have so many uses. There we go. Okay. With the coarseness gone. diamond and we're good <coughs> okay that feels better let us uh, set up camera two so that we've actually got another shot And camera two is also going manual focus because this is just not ideal. So there's areas where I just actually can't get in because of the angle, which I'm going to have to engrave to get the 3D effect that I want. But um, for a lot of this, I can get a file in here. The one thing I'm saying, I, I have to keep, I have to keep the whole inlay supported right on the edge. If I don't do that, then I run the risk of distorting it horribly and, you know, breaking it. And that would be sad. I'm using the safe edge quite a lot, even against the uh, the inlay itself or outlay. This isn't an inlay. This is a an onlay, an application. I don't know what is this. Let me know in the chat. change to camera one without even thinking about it.
Let's see. So that's, that's coming together. Now, jewelers, jewelers work this way, up against the edge, uh, but they also tend to be sitting down. I don't do that. Uh, I'm also running out of batteries in in the lapel, so I'm going to sort that out quickly. Oops. Alrighty. Oh, people talking about Vegemite in the chat. I agree with you, Frankie Chan. Sandwiches dipped in gravy? Mm -mm, no, thank you. If Ali was expensive, it would be an outlay. That's from Tutum Carmen. You're correct. All right, that's fine. You guys are looking after yourselves in there. That's good. Uh, I'm actually going to put on, I'm going to get my isotunes in, at least on one side, and uh, lose myself in this. This is the bit that I miss. Uh, for me to work efficiently, having that interaction throughout the day is what I miss when I'm doing the live streams. Uh, it's a weird one, isn't it? Anyway, uh, isotunes and uh, what am I currently listening to? Uh, Treo by Danny Treo. Although, uh, if you haven't read uh, or listened to the Confess book by Rob Halford, it's uh, really interesting. Um, I had no idea. Okay, cool. <coughs> Excuse me, people, sorry.
Oh, there we go. That's where I need to be. That's working out rather well. So it's a combination of uh, round needle files. And this, uh, I suppose it's called a knife blade. Well done.
Okay. We're getting there. Okay. All right, here we go. Come on. Okay, we're getting that. My thought was that I was going to polish this, but I actually quite like the rough, I like the rough look. This S is a little slightly weird shape. Yeah, I need a half round. Yeah, I need a half round file. Small one. I tell you guys, a a good collection of needle files is just is just essential to life. So here we are. Now I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have all the files stored touching each other. This is bad form. It really is. But I just don't know what to do. Look at that. Tiny little thing. Oh, there we go. So it's not quite half round as an oval. It might do. That might do. There we go, that's a half round, although it looks very blunt. Well, 
Let's see what we've got. All right. Uh, before we crack on with that, let's uh, answer a few questions. Um, Jules, who's a member, has been a member for three months, says, hey, Bun, uh, make some new inlays next to the stream uh, for, for Les Paul. I've been an Awesome Source member on the other channel for seven months and here for two months. Does something come up more often on the other channel or rather here? Uh, so everything will be going up on both channels. Sorry, I've got a, a cough sweet in my mouth and it's uh, causing some issues. Yes, every, every extra thing will be going up on both channels, but uh, I would honestly, uh, don't, you don't need to be a member of both channels, please don't, uh, unless you particularly want to. There's, there's, there's no real point to that. Um, but I do appreciate your support. Uh, now, as life is getting back to some semblance of normality and as I work out of headquarters and here more, there are going to be even more, there's going to be a lot more content going live for the extras channels uh, and for the, for members. So yeah, it's all coming together. Everybody's talking about squirrels. No, I want you guys to talk about yourselves. That's absolutely fine. It's all good. Cool. We're fine. Oh, sweet tea. Uh, sweet tea coming with a super chat says, I just bought a set of Grobe needle files and some Koradi needle rasps. Any suggestions on the needle file? I seem to use the half rounds more than any of the other. It's, it really depends. I'm, I'm using on this one. I've, I don't think I've ever used this particular one here uh, in anger, really. And it's a knife edge. It's a knife edge file. And for this work with that safe edge on the back, it's absolutely perfect. I'm finding a, a combination of that and a round, and obviously the half round here. I, I honestly think that it's a case of, there's a reason why there's a half dozen shapes or so, and that's because at some point those will always be needed. But you've gone and you've bought the good stuff. So uh, yeah, that's the way to do it. Robert R's asking, where are the squirrels? What have you done with them? Uh, honestly? Oh, here's one. Here we go. I feel you guys all knew I had ADHD way before I did. <laughs> anyway. Stian TV says, go have a hot whiskey in Lemzip. Um, yeah, at some point. We're, we've been going for... We've been going for two and a half hours. I'm going to get this finished. I'm going to get this finished. Um... I don't think I'm going to do anything tomorrow, though, because this is not... I'm normally, when I'm ill, it's a day or two, and then even with COVID, this is lasting longer than COVID last time. So, eh, what can you do? Creep, keep creating content. That's what, I, that's what you do. No matter what. Okay, so go off the edge. I could do this inlay, I could do this logo in sterling silver as well. But, uh, yeah. I think aluminium is absolutely fine. 
Whoops. Okay, let's get that half round for that shape there. That's what I'm struggling with. Not that one, this one. Oh yeah, you'll do it. You'll do nicely. Work holding. Work holding is always an issue. This is working out all right though, isn't it? Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, Mikey Copeland wants to know what the inlay says. It's my daughter's name, Jasmine, uh, in a, uh, a Fender-style script. And uh, this is obviously her guitar that I'm making, so... Uh, and it's a Fender-style guitar.
What do you guys think? I'm really rather happy with that. All right, I'm really happy with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what questions we've got currently. Uh, Buck Rogers says, "Good morning, Mr. Crow. Before I purchase, could you confirm the benefits of adding KTS titanium neck reinforcement? Is the difference truly audible? I build multi-laminate necks. Uh, I doubt. I doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. But I am talking from a the point of view of uh, not knowing." not having actually experienced it myself so yeah i think that uh, it's potentially snake oil i'm happy to be proved wrong though uh very happy to be proved wrong okay i need some oh there we go there we go 240. Uh, if you have any questions you absolutely want answered please send through a super chat and i will definitely see it uh, anything else? All oh, a bunch of people saying looks cool, beautiful, freaking amazing. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, Orson does, the, the kids, <laughs> we're talking about buying um, uh, instruments for the kids. And uh, yes, Orson does want to get into playing guitar. And uh, if he actually does, then... Um, and sticks with it, sticks with lessons, etc. Then we will together be building a guitar for him on the channel, uh, which is going to be great fun. But uh, yes, we were at uh, Absolute Music a few weeks ago, and uh, both boys saw an electric drum kit, and uh, yeah, were very taken with the idea of that, as was I actually. I think the issue we've got is uh, uh, the issue that we've got is that most music is better with with other people involved, and uh, I'm not particularly good at socialising, really. Uh, who was that? Somebody asked, uh, David Russo asks, uh, says, I got here late. What material is that? This is just uh, aluminium. So at this stage, I'm just uh, hitting it with 240 grit sandpaper and uh, answering questions on the live stream. The funny thing is, the plan this morning was literally just to cut out a bog standard inlay and, uh, or at least squared off edged thing and just be done with it. 
and the second I got working I realised that I had to turn it into a 3D a 3D effect, thus making my entire day harder but so much more satisfying I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here at all. All right, questions. <laughs> Terry Love says, Ben, if Orson gets a guitar or a drum kit, how much is it going to cost to equip the neighbor's cows with air defenders? Uh, anything that pushes the cows further away from my fence, uh, the better. Uh, it's the only issue I've got with this property is the sheer amount of flies that go with them. But I don't think anything's going to stop that, sadly. Uh, no, we would go for an electronic drum kit, uh, which I know is... Uh, controversial but uh, yeah it is what it is and in fact it would probably end up living down here I suppose which I fit it I, I, uh, I don't know what can you do what can you do Phone's going. Okay. Sorry, I just need to answer this question. This is the other issue with uh, live streams. I, I run the businesses via WhatsApp. Um, yo. So somebody wants to come down and have a tour of Crimson, but would like for me to be there. So I'm just trying to schedule that. Okay. So at this stage, it's just a little bit of uh, sanding. Uncle Duncan's shacks is we were talking about playing fretless bass last week, and I was wondering about the wear on the neck. Does that become a maintenance issue on a maintenance item on the guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. Long term, yes, potentially. Well, not potentially, yes. But uh, the the long term wear on the fretboard doesn't. It takes a while to do it. And most fretless instruments, you'd have um, round wound strings or flat wound strings. Sorry. Which uh, re which cause a lot less damage, uh, and you tend to play them a little bit more gently as well. It's not a dum 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 dum. It's and there and there we have the explanation of the day. What I don't know, but yes, event every now and then you would have to, i.e., every few years maybe, depending on how much you play, that it becomes something that you need to be aware of and you level the fretboard a little bit and, and go from there. Okay. I'm getting there. This J is problematic. Now the thing is, I'm I'm standing here going, Ooh, 
I could make jewellery for my kids with each of their names done in this sort of style as a as a necklace or something. And it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, guitar building being applicable across multiple different um, across multiple different uh, categories of craft and making. <laughs> Matt Lang saying, thank God you didn't name her something like Chrysanthemum. Damn right. Jasmine Lily is, uh, is good enough. Alright, so I've got a fairly... homogenous feel here. There are some bits that need work, so just in here feels a little bit poopy. And essentially I'm just carving, I'm carving metal. Alrighty. Favourite cowbell intensive songs, uh, pretty much anything by Bon Jovi, I suppose. Uh, not that I'm a super Bon Jovi fan, but you know, you say cowbell and Bon Jovi <laughs> comes to mind. Uh, now, what am I going to do? I would like some abrasive chord, but I don't have anything like that. Uh, I would also like some sort of micro mesh kind of stuff, and I don't have anything of that sort either. Uh, I suppose, I suppose at this point uh, it's into the Dremel drawers. Let's see what I've got in there. Lots, all sorts of stuff. So I've got a fairly gentle uh, brass brush here. <laughs> Actually, you don't need the actual machine. <laughs> I'm getting I think if this was in the Dremel, that could be problematic. But actually doing this by hand seems to be getting everywhere I need. Alright, well that wasn't the plan, but hey, there we go. A suede brush might work as well. That's a little bit... Uh, that needs a little bit of work there.
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna actually use the machine. I'm gonna put this in the Dremel and see what happens uh, before we even get anywhere near that. Though, eye protection. Now I've got a. Yeah, here we go. I've got a battery powered one. Okay. Ali N. Am I going to do the I? I might. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, that's the wrong. That should do. No. Aha. Okay, hopefully this grabs it. This doesn't grab it. Hopefully this just works. Ah. Oh, super gentle. How are you, Tanya? I'm okay. I just rescued a bumblebee the size of my thumb from your underwear on the washing line. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Thank you very much. You want a tea? I would love a cup of tea, please. Yes. What do you think? Oh, that's lovely. It's carving yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> She's not going to have a dot over her either. I don't think. I might stick one on, I will see. Oh, I know how to do it. She's going to have a dot over the eye. It's not... Yeah, okay. I figured it out. You figured it out. Right, I'll be back in the YouTube. And thank you very much for... Yeah. I don't need a bumblebee in my underwear. Ha. The joy of working from home, eh? Okay, so, uh, yes. Uh, triple over wire wool, people are saying. That's Buck Rogers. I don't actually think I have any wire wool here. Um... I tend to avoid it just because it gets in pickups uh, all over the place. It's, it's not fun. Um, I don't particularly like how I look in these, but uh, it is also just one of those things. They're very, very good. Okay, this is quite scary, but it is also, yeah, it's working. As long as you go gentle, it's fine. Okay.
So we've got a fairly cool uh, little, uh, a fairly cool matte finish there. Now, next up, fret rubbers. And I'm only pulling, but these are, it's getting in where I need it to get in and yeah, should work. Go gentle, Ben. Don't. And this is a medium thread rubber that I'm currently using. There you go. And again, because it's rubber, it's it's going inside the holes and dips and crevices and bits and pieces. And this is use number, <laughs> I don't know, for fret rubbers. I use them for all sorts of different things. Medium, fine. And onto the super fine. Now after this stage, <coughs> I'm going to carry on with some uh, chrome polishing compound. I could have done with wire wool to get in all the bits and pieces, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't have the right, I don't have that yet. Now I'm going to use this, which is a, a fret leveling, a prototype of a fret polishing tool. It's essentially a fret leveling file handle with some uh, very good quality leather on it to act as a strop and uh, I think this will work quite well here as well. Auto sold and a Dremel buffing wheel is another option uh, as suggested here with uh, by an honours botch. 
I am worried about that. I'm worried about that grabbing and ripping the whole thing out and breaking it. So yeah, I'm just trying to trying to go a bit more gentle here. So what we'll have is some really shiny areas along the top and some more things on the side that aren't quite as shiny, but that effect is not unattractive. It's this camera. Thank you very much. There's a lot of comment about bumblebees. This really is very delicate. I'm using the corner to go into the, the gaps to a certain extent. I'm enjoying this. Yes, this would be a bad spot to uh, spot a uh, spelling mistake. Absolutely. Okay, so a little bit more autosol and I'm going to use some tissue now.
Right, so this isn't perfect. But it is definitely something I'm happy with. Okay, more thoughts, more thoughts. Got a little... felt teardrop. Let's get this in a dremel and see what happens. I'm not currently sponsored by Dremel, but I think I probably should be. Okay, uh, now I'm going to use some polishing compound actually, uh, not Jewelers Rouge, but some black, well that's aluminium, let's see, hold on, back in a second. Yeah, I think just some black. So I've got a, a multi set of uh, Lux polishing compounds. They're each different uh, grades. And uh, it actually comes with a cheat sheet that tells you what color to use on most uh, mini metals. Aluminium is not in there, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, this is working out well. Or at least it's not feeling dangerous. It's not feeling too dangerous. Sorry. going to get warm soon.
the cave. <laughs> I'm liking the bumblebee emojis. Okay, so I've got lots of little bit of polishing compound. Go on. Go on. In bits and pieces all over the place, but that's fine. Uh, here's half a cocktail stick. Now, that both cleans it but also reminds me of something. Uh, watchmakers and some jewelers use wood as a polishing compound. Sorry, as a polishing tool. So if I want to get in and polish these edges absolutely perfectly, I could put this in a hand drill uh, or a lathe or something like that and use that. To polish all of the edges. It would be easier if I had a one that was whole, but hey. All right, VTR Addict is asking, is there an actual font for the Fender script? Uh, I'm not sure, but I asked uh, Bear, who is our one of our editors, to do this, and he did it in almost no time. He had it within an hour or two. So I'm assuming that it is available. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's put that away for now. I could easily spend another hour or two on this and go further and further and further into the down the rabbit hole of polishing and sorting and polishing and sorting and uh, uh, believe me I'm tempted uh, but I also need to crack on and get this thing installed so <laughs> well How exactly am I going to do that? I had an idea, I had a plan, and uh, that doesn't really work given how delicate the script is. I don't. <sighs> So, what do you think? The name of the font is Strato, apparently, according to Sweet Tea, and it is available for download.
Uh, VTR is asking if I could cut a, uh, a cavity into the headstock and then inlay it with resin, etc. Of course I could, uh, but that's not the plan. Sawdust Passion is asking if I could do super glue, uh, which is potential. Sawdust Passion also asks, do I have a Fordham flex shaft? I have a couple of flex shafts, not necessarily the Fordham uh, brand per se, but yes, I do have uh, I do have flex shafts. And uh, when the workshop is all up and running properly, then that's something that uh, I will uh, use more often. I think it's good for this sort of work for sure. Okay. So I'm just clearing up the mess, tidying up before we move on. <coughs> okay, dokey. Uh, Cougar eight 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 says just joined the stream is it not the base build uh no sorry i'm really not feeling well and wasn't up for uh, that i've been making a custom uh, logo inlay to finish and complete my daughter's build so that's a uh, uh, sort of a multi-month project that is coming to an end today uh, it's also something i felt a lot more capable of of attacking uh, i currently have the dreaded lurgy uh, not that dreaded lurgy, uh, but uh, a dreaded lurgy. I had that dreaded lurgy two weeks ago. And here we go. Robert Rocket Punk Art says, would you go for the same system you did on Nebula 2 with the pins? That was my thought. But this, the font is so thin that I don't actually know if I have the space to drill and do that. So essentially what I did then was I had a couple of pins going through the inlay and then those were drilled into holes in the top and it held the thing in place. And that is how you apply uh, applied logos around uh, a watch, etc. And it works very well, but yeah. And, and that's what I wanted to do. I'm just struggling with small drill bits today. What I really need, yeah, what I really need is a very small uh, precision pillar drill with DRO and, and all of that sort of stuff. That's the plan, long term. Uh, thanks, Kugo, appreciate that. Okay, completely lost that. Now, let's see. Hmm. All right, I've got some watchmaking tools somewhere. Da, 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 da. I have Okay, so tiny drill bits, not tiny enough, but tiny. An alternative, an alternative is to use a piece of black inlay, side dot inlay material and have it go through the, the center of the, uh, 
the center of the A there, where it would essentially be invisible. Uh, but anyway, I don't think that's the plan for today. There you go. You look at that. Yeah, that looks all right. All right, so I'm in the back of the workshop right now, desperately crawling through all sorts of stuff to find what a toolbox should have. Some small things in it. And here we are. Okay, so that's some steel. All right, I, I think that's that. I'm very much looking forward to getting this workshop finished, finished and complete. All right, let's have a look. So I'm a, a collector of tools uh, and you never really know when something's gonna come in handy. Now in here, oh look at that, antique scalpel blade, I have got that which is some thin spring steel I would say, so that's uh, 0.75 of a millimetre, which is nice. There's some more there. Okay, so, so that's good, but there's, I don't think there's any drill bits in here. Oh, that's a needle. Bits of clocks. Being an inveterate hoarder and collector of stuff has its uses. I must say. I can assume that's brass. Hmm, gold plated, maybe. Must be. Alrighty, anyway, so, so there's that, which is cool. In here, I'm hoping. will be some drill bits. Aha, yes. Oh, look at that beautiful thing. So here we go, 0 0.65 millimetre, 0 0.7, 0 0.89. I think we'll go with a 0.7, shall we? That's a tiny drill bit. Yeah. 0 0.95, 1.6, 0 0.6 millimeters and whatever one thirty-second of a millimetre is. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces. Oh, I love my life. In fact, there's a bunch of uh, files and needle files and, and all sorts. There's even more 
tiny, these are tiny, tiny drill bits. So those are, you know, a tenth of a millimeter, some of them. Just, uh, yeah, fun stuff. Fun stuff. And this is the point. I, I, I don't need to go in that box from one year to the next, but when I do, I really do. So I'm going to use this little Archimedes drill. And I'm going to sincerely hope that I don't break this drill bit. Uh, let's see. All right. Don't forget that this is a live stream. And uh, uh, if you've got any questions, ask away. Super chats will be answered uh, emphatically. And uh, the rest of it, it's all good. Uh, William Dodds says, I want to turn some guitar volume and tone knobs on my lathe. Anybody have any ideas? I have a small wood lathe. The only thing I would say is uh, sacrifice an old pot so that you can uh, take the shaft out of the pot. Once you've drilled the hole that that goes into and the recess for the washer, etc., you then put the shaft of the pot in place, lock that in with the grub screw, flip it all around, put it in your truck, and then you can turn the outside of the, uh, of the knob, or at least the end, and get that nice and finished. Okay, T. Oh, there's three, so two. Little Archimedes drill. Stay where you are. It does amaze me how often jewelers and watchmaking tools come come to bear in my guitar building at the moment. Feels weird doing it that way around. Oh, that's better. Now, as I go through the metal into the wood, ah, there you go. Did I actually go through? No, I didn't. Okay, I feel like I need to hold this down. I'm just going to use some masking tape. When you're dealing with the sub millimeter things, it may well be worth being extra careful. Oh, I've covered my, no I haven't, there it is. Okay, we're getting there. That's just getting caught, so I need to tighten the uh, tighten the chuck up a little bit. And 
I'm going to get some lubrication going as well. Here we go. So this is some, uh, I think it's a microcrystalline wax lube. This should, this should help. That does feel better, actually. I think I've gone through. <laughs> Do you look at that? Okay. So, yeah, we've got that. I'm not going to go through there. That's pretty much the best spot there. So I'm going to very gently tap just a location. And then it's simply a case of uh, doing the same thing again. Just let the tool do the work. Right, I think is through. There we go, we've got a hole there, we've got a hole there. Nice. I'm just gonna leave that one in, in the tool, just in case I need it in a bit. All right, questions, queries, comments, criticisms, hit me, people. Uh, the Artful Todger comes up with a comment that is quite amusing, says that was quite an expert rhythm he has going there. I'm very good at drilling holes and things. Yes, I mean, that's what I do. Uh, Rocket Punk Art, when I see the drill bit flew like that, makes me a bit anxious. Uh, Sweet Tea says, I must have one of those drills. They don't come up very often. That's a particularly nice little one, but... Uh, 
Uh, you can buy modern versions of them for not very much. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'll keep my eye open for one for you. Afternoon Troops, that's Rab Knox. How you doing, Rab? Eye protection, if that goes, you do not want it in your eyes. That's a very good point, Mark. Um, Steve, Sawdust, Artful Todger just says, Nyar. Guys, come on. Jamie Crockremis says, That tiny drill is so amazing, I want one. Little Archimedes drill. Sandy Drozdek says, Joining in late today, lol. I spent part of yesterday learning to carve a wooden spoon. Cool. Started by splitting a piece of tree with a hand axe. It was fun. I absolutely believe you. That sounds awesome. Uh, oh, Lisa, yes. Check out Iwasake. They are awesome uh, rasps and files. And there we go. Okay. Sweet Tea says, I don't want a modern one, they're too shiny. I absolutely agree with you. Well, I'll keep an eye out. Uh, Ape Song's asking me if I found the time to find the book The Perfectionists. Uh, I couldn't find it on, on Amazon. Uh, I need to have another look. I have taken photographs of this before, but I'll have a... There we go. I saw a hand drill and thought about you. It was shaped like a triangle. So I'm assuming it had a central shaft and then uh, two pieces of twine and then a central thing. And you push the rod up and that does its job. Okay, uh, so this is the piece of steel that I found. Just a little bit of 240 grit to, uh, to clean this up. Yeah, essentially the, that kind of uh, drill with the triangular look to it is a very, very, very early uh, Archimedes drill. The same sort of thing I've just used here, but, uh, but even earlier. Okay, so this is, should be slightly larger than the hole. Let me remeasure that. So this is five, six, seven. This is 0 0.8 actually. So I've got a tenth of a millimeter. <laughs> uh, my hole is a tenth of a millimeter too small. It feels like Formula One. Yeah, one half of a millisecond behind him, Fernando. Oh. Lewis, I suppose. Max. Norris. Lando bloody Norris. I'm trying to figure out who's the the current crop. Right, so here's my Yeah, I'm just using the The material itself to do as to act as a drill. Well, that's easier. <sighs> Success ish. We're getting there. William Dodds, he's been a member for two months of Cool Beans. Uh, he says uh, this one was all metal and had a shaft like a car. 
Huh. I would like to see a. Um, I'd like to see a, a picture of that, if at all possible. That sounds. Um, that sounds really interesting. All right. So that's actually now gone through. Uh, this end is fairly rough, which is why it's acting as a drill bit. Oh, actually, tell you what, I need to, I need to get the soldering iron up and running so that can warm up while we're doing this. I'm enjoying this. I've uh, not been feeling very well, but uh, as the uh, day progresses, it's, yeah. All right, so you... You even plugged into anything? No, you're not. Wow. Red inspection lamp. That can go off. Cool. Okay. Soldering iron. Solder, power, damp sponge. Let's open this hole up, shall we? This is absolutely not an efficient use of one's fingers. Uh, there we go. We've just gone through. Fairly short. That will do. That will do nicely. All right. Side cutters. Stick that down. Very hard metal, this. Uh, actually, no, I've made a mistake there. I need to, uh, the piece that I install needs to have a polished end. Because I don't want to have to repolish the whole thing. So let's, uh, uh, 
It's going to need to be diamond, isn't it? JS Trucking, how you doing, man? Uh, it's good morning, Ben. Sorry I missed yesterday's stream. No worries. I uh, probably should. Well, nobody really knew that I was going to be doing it or not. Uh, I'm just going to hit this on the uh, Robert Solby Pro Edge because because <laughs> I need to eye protection. Of course, he says nearly stabbing himself in the eye with the tiny rod. Okay, are we on? Nice, very nice. Sorry, I uh, didn't give you that footage quite directly. So it's now nice and flat. And uh, yeah, just going to hit it with the uh, little bit of polishing compound and a strop. We should be all right. nearly four hours into this. This is not something that the average luthier would feel is worth spending four hours on, but hey, it's all good. Okay. Nope. You're not focused where you're supposed to be. So I polished both ends. Flip it over. And there we go. Now the uh, soldering iron has warmed up. What I really need to learn how to do is braise, and that is not, not something I have any experience with. I'm not sure that's actually done its thing. Hold on, when you guys weren't even watching. It actually has.
Nice. Super nice. Just come in. Drop the file. There we go. So a little bit more polishing because, uh, of course, uh, Jay Strucky says, and why are we making a new logo again? Uh, this is Jasmine's, uh, this is for Jasmine's guitar and it's her name in the Fender script. Uh, as you can see, and uh, yeah, we're doing it so that I can finish that particular build while um, also doing a live stream that isn't too taxing because I'm not feeling very well, but uh, uh, nothing serious, just, uh, uh, yeah, just a little spot of man blue. Hold on, I need, I need some, this will do. 1200 grit, wet and dry. Just on that J. I should have done this. I should have done the polishing after putting these in, but I thought I was going to have a different solution. It's all my bad. All my bad. Beth is asking if I'm going to put a crimson logo on this guitar too. I don't think so. Um, I don't see the need. Uh, it's got my sort of BC thing on the uh, uh, on the reverse of the headstock, uh, my own personal sigil. Uh, so yeah, I think it'll. I think it's fine. Uh, that being said, I did pull out a crimson logo just to see if I fancied it. Jay is trucking. Ah, okay, I misread the title then. I thought you were designing a new company logo. Uh, custom logo creation in metal. Ah, good point. No, it's um, no, not a long term. It's just uh, this one. Uh, just for Jasmine. Oh, I enjoy doing this sort of thing, people. How are you going to stop the aluminium from oxidizing? I'm not. Um, every now and then, I'm going to have to hit the top of it to make it shiny. But uh, that it happens so slow, uh, I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'll do exactly what I'm doing here. Leather strop, polish it up a little bit, maybe hit it with a Dremel, something like that. But a very, very valid question, uh, nonetheless. Okay, so here's what it currently looks like. A little bit bent, I do need to uh, straighten it up. But uh, yeah, we're good. Alrighty, now, you could apply some clear nail varnish, 
to, yep, that's a good point, I could. Uh, Jasmine Guitars is way better than random, I can tell you that much, that's from Mark. Uh, Jasmine Guitars does exist, apparently, somebody said. So, yeah, sadly that's not actually available. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the whole random thing is obviously not happening because of uh, people being as negative as you are, Mark. I mean, yeah. Uh, no, so the Random Guitars Instagram account is where we are now doing the Guitar of the Week uh, stuff. And it's about promoting random guitars. So we are, and I'm hoping that it's going to end up being a Guitar of the Day. If you have a guitar build that you want us to push, then uh, uh, at Crimson Guitars, at Random Guitars, and uh, uh, it, it, let us know what Crimson product or inspired by or whatever you've, you've used, and uh, we'll reshare. <sighs> Casey McDermott is coming with a super chat. Thanks very much, Casey. And says, uh, hearing you happy makes us happy, Ben. Uh, living my best life, working my GGBO build while listening, uh, chatting with the crew. Cheers, get well soon. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think there are a few things more important than being happy, and it's often a damned difficult state to achieve, don't you feel? Uh, okay, so let's clear this off. I just need to get rid of a little bit. Uh, oh, and I need a tiny little shiny hex nut over the eye, which I think is a damn fine idea. So I'm going to find a small Allen key and, uh, and utilize that. Let's just use our brand new shirt to clean the polishing compound off. I, uh, uh, I took Orson to the cinema to see oh, it's still plugged in to see the Doctor Strange uh, movie the other day and uh, as I was putting on a white t-shirt I thought this is a bad idea and of course I proceeded to spill Diet Coke all down my front and then needed to go clothes shopping what a, what a crying shame excuse me Are you not glad I managed to mute that? <laughs> I really am. Uh, Jason Smith. Jason, thank you very much. £20 Super Chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, Jasmine is the cheaper brand of Takamini. Hope you will get well soon. Thank you. And thank you. It has been in the back of my mind all day. I saw them at the guitar show, didn't I? Uh, at this most recent guitar show, and uh, it didn't even twig. What can you do? Uh, yes, I am fully expecting to be fully functional again soon. I cannot. I'd only just recovered from bloody COVID. But uh, anyway. Time to get the guitar out. I need to find some tissue to put on top of my workbench here. We're thinking about uh, getting some nice leather to, to use as uh, workbench pads. One of the many, many, many projects we've got on the go, Crimson, at the moment. Let's get this 
this. Over there. Of course, I focus the camera and then move the, uh, the subject. That should be fine. Uh, JS Trucking says, asks me if I'm watching the Obi Wan series. Uh, we have not started that yet. I am very much looking forward to it, though. Uh, where am I? Let's get that off. Okay. And the rain comes down. Let's get some light on. Not that. Not that. Ah, there you are. Okay. Ryan Mowbray says, I guess Ben has been too busy lately to relax watching Obi-Wan. Um, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy, it's been crazy. Um, by the time I'm free to watch, the entire season will be available. That's a fair point. Oops. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm after there. What I'm going to do... is yet another masking tape trick. So when you need to mark a position on something nice and hard like this, uh, but you don't want to put too much pressure on everything, loosely apply some masking tape where you need your thing. Don't burnish it down. And then when you've got your position right, it's just a case of gently applying pressure, and you should. So there's the one. There's the other. Okay. That's a little bit more subtle than I thought it would be. there. I'm just checking how straight that is because uh, if that had a curve in it the positioning would be off a little bit. I now know where I need to drill my holes and I'm really rather glad I didn't put the drill bit away because uh, I still need this don't I. I also need a, a neck rest. It's a little one. So now all the cameras are in the wrong place. Dagnam it. Mm. 
Okay. Focused. All right. So Okay, I can normally sense how deep I've gone, but with this I don't seem to have that. And I also normally avoid using masking tape as a depth stop because it can move. But uh, in this case... I'm gonna... I'm gonna do it in any case. Yep, there we go. Now, I'm just going to take that out. Get the swarf a little bit. And crack on. And I now have two very precise holes, exactly where I need them to be. They're a tad smaller. I'm wondering about actually just hammering them in. By, by a tad, I mean a tenth of a millimeter. So that should be all right. What do you think? Leno Singh says, by the way, have you solved the humming problem? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That is, uh, you'll be seeing that in a video on Wednesday on the main channel. But essentially, I made a silly mistake. Yeah, I don't want to use glue of any sort. I just want to hit this thing in and uh, see what happens. Borgonian evolution is my fault. I should really uh, schedule these streams a week in advance so everybody knows that they're coming. And I really wasn't sure I was going to be doing one at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, here we are. Okay, so I've got a little jeweler's hammer here. It's actually got a little bit of super glue on it, so I need to just buff that up. And uh, the, the hammer head itself needs to be nice and polished so that I don't damage what I'm, what I'm working on. So for the like, 45th time today, out comes this little strop on a handle, which may well be one of the most useful tools that I have ever developed in my life. I suppose we should probably make this available on the website. It's super, super cool. See so yeah, how the shinier your hammerhead is, 
the better it's going to be at uh, not damaging what you're working on. Whoa, Ben, chill, Winston. Okay. So, are you in place? You are. Of course, this is where it could go catastrophically wrong. Uh, no, JS, I didn't drill two more holes. That was just a, a little bit of uh, dust. Okay, that one's... I'm going in. You know what? I kind of want to leave it here. I want to leave this completely s suspended above the. Above the level of the fretboard. Isn't that cool? Can you guys see what I'm, can you guys see what I'm seeing? Ta -da. That makes the whole thing so 3D. I've got to, I've got to move. Hold on, you need to see from this side. I'm very glad that camera wasn't the one that was on. Do 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 do. All right. Uh, three, walk around, All right, now I've got a camera, is that not a really cool look? <laughs> look at the shadows. Yeah. There we go. Oh, baby. All right. Sorry, that, that caught me by surprise. That, I really like that. I need to do potentially just a little bit more fiddling. But I don't believe I have ever seen a logo suspended in that way to such an extent. Over a headstock. Woohoo! Woo bloody who! Ha! Okay, um, seriously. I'm incredibly happy with this. Uh, I could not be happier. Uh, I could be, the finish could be better. Uh, we used a, a lacquer that's a little bit soft and a little bit scratchy, but uh, these are, that's the way the crookie, the crookie, yeah, we've, we're, we're crumbling crooks over here. Uh, that is way, the way the cookie crumbles. Now I do need uh, to do the eye and we're gonna do that quickly now. Uh, but let's see if there's any questions before I crack on with that. Uh, and you can have another quick look. <laughs> okay, Jason Smith has come in with another super chat uh, technical question. Could I finish a maple fretboard with crimson water-based lacquer with the frets in situ? Uh, yes, you absolutely could. And yes, I, whenever you are lacquering a maple fretboard, I uh, do it with the frets in emphatically. Now the water-based lacquer is not as hard wearing as 2K poly or anything like that. You will, uh, it is not, it's 
not as hard wearing. It won't last as long, but it will give you a very good result that will last a hell of a lot, lot longer than uh, uh, guitar finishing oil or anything like that. Uh, I'm sorry for the noise. I am after all in the shed and it is pissing it down now. Uh, so yeah, there we go. People are saying that it needs to be knocked in flush because it's going to catch on hair or something. That's a very good point, but uh, given how much, uh, given how many other things you have that uh, can get caught on, I'm not too worried. Neil Gordon says it doesn't need the dot. Uh, Mark Guitar says, how do you float the dot? And I wouldn't. What I would do is get a, a piece of... Um, uh, it doesn't need the dot. I would just have a piece of uh, Allen key sitting right there. Ah, screw it. It needs a dot. Why not? Because it might go horrifically bit wrong then. That's why not. Oh, I found a fret rubber. Oh, I found a bunch of fret rubbers. Woohoo! There we go. <laughs> that was the first fret rubber from about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I'm excited because I've got a special drawer for fret rubbers, so uh, eventually everything will be all organised. Yeah, this should do 0 0.05 of an inch. And uh, I'm going to take it over and put it on the uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, polish the end. Well, let's see. No, yep, here it is. Alright, so this is not particularly um, hard material. JS Trucking has come in and said, oh, be careful, Ben, potential copyright strike, lol. That was a quote from Bruce Almighty that you just did. I enjoyed that movie. I avoided watching it for years, thinking that I would absolutely hate it. But um, in the end, as comedy goes, it was quite amusing. All right. <laughs> Second note says someone from the Fender Custom Shop is watching and they are absolutely stealing that idea for some runs, lol. It would be very amusing if that did happen. Is the gap enough to store some picks underneath? It actually probably is. Uh, now that would worry me from a strength point of view. So yeah, I'm just polishing, polishing this up a bit. It's proving to be quite difficult to actually see, but hey. Ian e M. Mm hmm. Paul needs, I agree with you. <laughs> okay, guys, we're. Uh... Yeah. Terry, don't worry, I wish I had the ability to have power naps. Rocket Punk, steal it, go for it. A 
Okay, so that is now a slightly shiny Allen key on the end at least, and that's going to be, oh, look at that. Looks like I've got a bit of a fiber optic in there or something. That's quite cool. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be my eye in there. I just need to uh, chop that off. Uh, no, I'm going to glue a hole first because uh, as big as this currently is, I'm not going to lose it. So let's figure that out. So 1.25 millimeters, basically. The only thing I'm worried about with this is uh, uh, is the the evidence of the hole in the headstock. <coughs> I I've got fairly good eyes. Uh, that's a one point three millimeter drill bit it's very close to what i want and that's uh 1.3 maybe it's just luck of the draw i've got lots of 1.3s I think 1.3 is uh, around about what we need, don't you? Way 1.2. Now, so I'm just gonna, if it fits in this chuck, which is a big if. Come on, what are you doing, Ben? Struggling. Get out of camera and have a look. Um, Paul Need says, did I tell you I made such a strop months ago? Um, no. And uh, I'm going to say great minds think alike, although I've had this one for two or three. Hell, I've had this one since, and you don't care, do you? Since the old logo. You can just see that. But um, they're damn useful, aren't they? So let's look at this. That's where I want that. Cutting in reverse is actually quite useful. Okay, so that was uh, that was drilled at one point two. I do just want to go in with a a one point three. just for the first, or even a 1.5, that's fine. Just for the first very small area. And I'm definitely going backwards there. Okay, so that's allowed me to, let's just clear the excess off and uh, should make it look a little bit tidier when we, uh, when we go in. Cool.
So I wonder how deep I went. Using this as a depth stop. Deeper than that. So So that's where I want to cut this off. And I'm just going to use some heavy duty uh, end cutters. These are Bernard or Morn Industries. If you ever see any Morn Industries uh, wire cutters available, buy them. They are well worth having. Uh, the vintage ones in particular, but uh, yeah, the modern ones are fine too. Okay. So that's there. I'm going to put some goggles on just in case somebody shouts at me. I'm a good boy, I am. So you see, what I was doing was standing here with one facing that way and one in my hand, so nothing was going to go anywhere near me anyway. But... Yeah, you need to be careful. So you see, because I made the the opening of the hole a little bit bigger, I can put it in place and it's fine. But the deeper it goes, the smaller it gets. Meaning I can hold it in place. So I messed up a little bit. <laughs> Slipped just a fraction. There we go. I think I just finished the guitar. Let's see. It's a little bit high. Oh, I see what's happened. So, yeah, I need to push the E up. There we go. Whew. Okay. So I had ended up whacking that a little bit and the E went down somehow. But in the end, in the end, I am now intensely happy with how this guitar has turned out. Uh, you can see the difference in the shine between the aluminium and the, the steel of the hex bolt. You can see, and the chrome even in the uh, in the parts that the whole thing. Well, 
it is what it is. But this is definitely not your average instrument. Emphatically not. Alrighty, um, okay, cool. Sorry, easily distracted. That is me. That is me emphatically. So, so yeah. Let me just clear up a little bit. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or criticisms, uh, now is the time to do it. Uh, we are coming to the end of this stream. Uh, I am very interested in hearing what you guys think about having a stream done like this, um, whereby I don't have a second person on uh, helping, although uh, Tanya is here. Uh, at the moment, the kids are off on holiday and requiring constant feeding. What is it? Um, but, uh, but yes, so the, the thought is that uh, in general, it's easier for me to be able to do an ad hoc stream and just say, oh, I'm doing this, I'm gonna stream it if this is the thing and I've got the computer and I'm generally looking through. I feel it went quite well. Uh, a little bit less uh, of the sort of uh, back and forward and I do enjoy, I really do enjoy doing the live stream uh, style thing with, uh, with Tanya. And, uh, ah, there it is. <sighs> yeah, but from a point of view of actually achieving guitar building, I think this worked out quite well, but as viewers, as people involved, what do you think? There's uh, nearly 300 of you and only 150 odd likes, so I don't know, maybe it hasn't gone that well. We'll see. Organian Evolution says, I love that colour changing paint, I want to do a body in it at some point, it's very cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> T-shirt idea, I'm easily dis... Good idea. So, there we go. Hold on. Let's just sort this out before I get the guitar up and running, yes? Here what we've got. So this is a Rajani app. You can get them from or through either Rajani directly or uh, uh, Leo and Ted's, who are one of my favourite uh, dealers of all time. Just one of the nicest chaps in the industry.
uh, tuna. So, okay, people love having uh, Taz here, but this also works. It's going to do some tuning before turning the amp on. Uh, Rabnox saying there's a new video going live on his channel tonight. Andrew Clayton says this type of stream works well. I can't read and tune at the same time. Ha! Uh, works well. You seem to get longer periods of work done. On the other hand, your good lady and sister are fun to have along for the ride. That's the thing. I enjoyed having Taz, but this works as well. I enjoyed it. This is uh, Stephen Clark. Uh, it keeps the mucking around a little bit less. PS Guardian says, I enjoy both formats. This is via Super Chat. Thank you very much. Um, I get to see your creativity either direction, so I'm set. I haven't been on top form today, I must say. It's very important to stretch your strings before. Matt Terman enjoys my teaching style. Thank you very much. Uh, Borgonian Evolution likes the uh, interaction when there are other staff helping, specifically the break time shenanigans. The break time shenanigans are my least favorite part, but hey. Um, my my workshop is my safe my safe place and when i'm off having a break and somebody else is messing around in my workshop i never know what exactly is going to go wrong in my workshop which is part of my soul after all so ha Uh, Paul needs asking where where the uh, de uh, the Kemper profiler is up at the house at the moment. I haven't quite figured out. I'm going to get that set up down here once I've got the new studio, and everything's uh, in place with the new the extension all sorted out. And I need to figure out how exactly to do that. Um, JS Trucking said this format is what you needed for that sanding stream, law. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, Uriel Sage says, ye old Taz and Tan give the stream a nice atmosphere. I agree. But uh, Norm Barrow says, yes to ad hoc live streams. Shop the Fox. Cheers, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, basically, it's a bit of both. Okay, so, um, well, here we go. Now, remember I'm not a player, not by a long shot, um, but this guitar has really worked out rather well. Uh, Crikey. I need to tidy this workshop up. Uh, look, we're, we're at the end of this build. It has taken far too long. We've saved a lot of weight, taken it down to uh, the, the, the weight of an instrument that most people would be happy with playing. And it has also improved the sound, in my opinion. Uh, the, the pickup required some messing about. I had thought it was a good idea to put hex bolts in there. And turns out they were stainless steel and therefore not magnetic and therefore didn't affect, well, actually detrimentally affected the tone of the guitar. So I've swapped those out and changed them back. Uh, it is only a single pickup, but the end result is my daughter now has a guitar that she will feel comfortable playing. She has a guitar that is visually unique, I think. And most importantly, it's something I built for her and something that uh, whether she sticks with playing or not, it makes no difference. It's something from me to her that most... I don't know. It makes me feel good. Uh, I've enjoyed this. I have really, really, really enjoyed this process. And I hope you too. You have too. I hope you have too. In any case, the guitar sounds all right. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm.
I do wish I could play. So it's a very expensive pickup. This is uh, House of Tone. So this is just playing around with the volume control. I can't even play for shit. Come on. Lost it, lost it, lost it. So all of that was without a plectrum of any sort. Uh, I tend to use my fingers. Um, uh, let's just get this tuned again. I haven't stretched the strings properly after saying, hey, you need to stretch the strings. Come on, tuna.
All right. So yeah, I I really do. Uh, I've I've always from the beginning tended to play with a finger style kind of a thing. It's just what I was originally taught. Tell me to roll the tone off. Mark Jennings comes in saying string stretching is a myth. Absolute bullshit, I'm afraid, Mark. Uh, initially, when you set up a guitar, when you've got a brand new set of strings, if you don't stretch them, they will go out of tune with the first few times you play them. Uh, in the end, it makes no difference because they're already stretched as you've been playing them or just through tension. But I want to be able to pick up a, a guitar that's got brand new strings like this and know that it's basically going to stay in tune. Robert R says, to be honest, Ben, I did not think I would like all these holes in the body, but now that it's all finished, it's not too shabby. Thank you very much. I love the 3D effect. I really do love the 3D effect that we've got here. Um, and the fact that the, the logo has had the same sort of thing happen makes me, uh, it's worked out. I'm, I'm really happy with how this has worked out. Um, Mark saying, no, you're wrong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, uh, I can't believe we're going to fall out over something as basic as string stretching. I'll show you the next time you and I meet and you'll start to agree with me. Physically, if the guitar is going out of tune because you haven't stretched the strings and then you stretch the strings and it stops going out of tune, which is what happens every single time. Yeah, but if you can convince me, I crave new knowledge, so go for it. So anyway, yes, I normally play, uh, so that's the, the, everything I've, that's all with, with fingers and, uh, and the fingernail there. But uh, most of you play with plectrum, so. Plectrum, the plectrum adds just a little bit of brightness uh, to proceedings, and uh, yeah. Pickup. It's all you need. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, so we could have we could have added push pull. We could have added a, a variable tone control that's got um, dialed in tones set using uh, various uh, capacitors, etc. But 
in the end, this pickup, this guitar, the weight, how comfortable it is, the whole thing is doing it for me and I could not be happier. Thank you very much for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you have yet to do so. Consider joining, uh, checking out Crimson Guitars Extras channel where some of this build was streamed. Uh, we do uh, Luthi's Question Time on Sunday evenings and then live stream builds at various times through the week, generally on Mondays, but it happens. Most importantly, go make some sawdust, make some guitars of your own. Check out Great Guitar Build Off. It is currently happening. The place to be. See you guys soon. Goodbye. And back to the live stream. So, yeah, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. Oh, I could be. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? So, with every single build, there are always things, there are always issues that uh, we are not 100% convinced on. In this case, I don't like uh, the, the, the final varnish is not spot on. The final varnish is a little bit too soft. Uh, now I've changed that at headquarters we're using a different, much harder varnish which gets a better, harder response and that's fantastic. I love the logo. I could have polished it a little bit more. I could have spent another hour or two doing that. Uh, it's got me seriously considering doing this sort of logo on, on the Crimson uh, tools. We could, we could see and see a 3D effect of the Crimson logo and uh, yeah, I, I really like that. So, yeah, there's things to consider there. The hardware's a little bit heavy still. The tuners are quite chunky. I could have saved a little bit more weight there. I've added uh, these uh, acorn nut control knobs, which I love the look of. I love the look of, but again, they're still fairly chunky. Uh, but, And if I was doing this on a production guitar, if I was doing these holes on a production guitar, it would be done on a CNC machine to be that much more regular. Doing all of this by hand was an absolute nightmare and did not go as smoothly as it could have. All of that being said, I've been playing a lot of guitars recently. I've been touching a lot of guitars, not necessarily playing. I've been looking at a lot of instruments made by a lot of other people and there are guitars there are guitars that have a certain soul, a certain feel, a certain life. And there are a lot of guitars that are just a chunk of wood with some finish and some strings. And this is, thankfully, the former. And I've made some guitars without soul. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I am the be all end all, etc. I've I've made some doozies, I tell you. But this works. Hell, it was based off a kick guitar. What can you do? But uh, there we go. <sighs> yeah. See you soon. Goodbye. That outro segued into an outro that segued into another outro. I don't know what's happening anymore. Uh, back to the live stream. Uh, guys, Questions. So Mark Nicholas says, Ben, lose the string, the string trees and use staggered posts to save a bit more weight. That's a good point. Minimal weight. Um, I actually really have staggered tuners on there, come to think of it. I don't know why we've got string trees, but uh, the holes are there now and that's just the way it goes. Uh, Paul Cook was saying uh, the goodbye was for the edit vid. He'll waffle for a little bit more yet. You've got me. Got it in one. Um, so yeah, that's all fun. Uh, somebody said I've been practicing. I've, I tell you, getting the Kemper has made a big difference just because I can now actually play uh, when the kids have gone to sleep and it sounds good. Up until some bastard nicked my good headphones uh, from the, uh, the guitar show. At the, at the end of the show, somebody popped along and nicked my headphones. Which sucks. So I need to get some new headphones. Um, Neil Morehouse is saying, Ben, how much does this guitar weigh right now? Um, I need to see if I can find the scales. Hold on. Chat amongst yourselves. Please do. Let's just put this down out of the way. There you go. Okay. 
Okay, I think, I think those scales are next door. Uh, hold on for a second, I'll be back in like 30 seconds, everybody. Not a clue. All right, so I can't seem to locate the scales, I'm afraid. Uh, Talitha will flash it up on the screen though, because uh, we did weigh it, we did weigh it the other day. Hmm, where are they? I know my mic is still on. I was just shooting, I wasn't going off upstairs to, you know, have a crafty wee or anything. Uh, Okay. Yeah, Mark, you're very, you're, you're on very difficult territory here because uh, unfortunately you're completely wrong. Um, any guitar goes out of tune if you don't stretch your strings before you play them when you've got a brand new set of strings. But anyway, uh, Stephen Clark prefers the staggered tuners as well, especially the locking staggered tuners, which is what I've got on here. Uh, ben Time and Guitar saying, is it neck heavy? Absolutely not. You know, it does have heavy tuners, but I've taken the body from being a really heavy body to being an average sized, an average weight body for an electric guitar. It's around about eight pounds. Um, it's, I've not taken an eight pound guitar and reduced the body weight by three pounds to then make something that might be neck heavy. So yeah, no, it's it's all good. It is all good. Sweet tea, have a good uh, have a good day. Free bird, free bird, free bird. That's Bulgarian. Uh, nope. Guitar strap versus microphone. But oh, my bad. Sorry. Terry, yeah, put Mark in put time out. <laughs> no, don't. Um, you can't argue the physicality of it. I'm afraid this is the thing. I, you, 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 you're arguing by saying that what I'm saying is bullshit. You're not giving me any actual evidence to the alternative, which is, which is the thing. Um, my argument is that absolutely patently and obviously and physically provable every single time you put a new set of strings on they come out of the packet and when you put tension on it that string needs to stretch to a certain point before it will reach equilibrium every single time all of the guitar string make, makers say the same sort of thing so i spend a good two or three minutes stretching those strings out until they reach equilibrium and then stay in tune all of the time this is obviously true to anybody who cares to you know sit there with a guitar for a while put a new set of strings on play it for five minutes without stretching the strings and the whole thing will be out of tune uh, more so on the wound strings than on the unwound etc but it is what it is and i solve this detuning issue by stretching the strings so as much as i like learning there is nothing that you can say to me that is going to prove to me that the physical truth of what I physically do and physically myself see is wrong. Now you might have an argument, I, d I don't know, I've got no idea what you're saying, but unfortunately you're, you're wrong. Uh, Bose headphones and speakers are great, but pricey, that's from Robert. Uh, I'm a nice set of uh, 
stay away from Casey. Uh, I had a nice set of AKGs that were nicked, and uh, I did like those. Uh, oh, my phone's going. <laughs> Mark's phoning me. Go on then, prove it. You can't argue with an argument by saying your argument's false. You've got to give me some reason why I'm wrong. Shall I put you on speaker? Send me a video. <laughs> Hold on. I guess so. Uh, oh, there we go. You on? Am I on stream? Yep, I think so. Excellent. My point, my point is that the whole exercise of stretching the string, all that's doing is settling the strings into their break points at the nut and the bridge. And you can do that much more efficiently and much faster by not stretching the strings, but physically pressing down either side of the break point very hard to settle the strings into that. You're achieving the same thing. You're, you're pulling the string. You're stretching the string. But it's not stretching the string, is it? It really physically is. This is this is where we fundamentally... The string does, the string does not stretch. I fundamentally disagree with you. I think that if we set up an experiment whereby, for example, uh, I suppose the easiest way to do it would be with a... Hi, everybody listening, I am actually pretty good friends with Mark here. We're... we're this is cool. Um, uh, permanent marker. Mark two spots with a permanent marker. Uh, and it might not be something that physically you can actually see, which is, which is the issue. But the, the metal stretches, and this is what the string manufacturers themselves say is the case. Um, As Paul Cook has just said in the chat, wire has elastic deformation. Sorry. Not plastic deformation, so you're not stretching. Wire has elastic deformation, which is correct. It Wire deforms elastically up until a certain point where it reaches equilibrium, which is what I've just said to you. Ben, do me a favor. Send me the link. Shut the app up and accept that I'm right. <laughs> nope. And I love being taught. <laughs> and I absolutely love being taught things. But, uh, you know, we're both... We're, we're, we're hitting the same... We are... We're going for the same result, which is a string that stays in tune. And I'm stretching it in the middle of the thing, and you're stretching it outside of the scale length of the guitar. But we're doing the exact same thing. There is no settling inside of the nut. The nut slot is not something where, unless it's a poorly cut nut, where your string is going to get caught. It should be uh, a fluid spot. When I'm pulling the string on the inside of the guitar, I'm stretching the entire length of the string from the ball end up to the nut. Um, so even what I just did there, even what I just did there is changed the... What you're doing is physically not stretching the string. You are putting... putting there we go, I just detuned it. You... I, I understand what you're trying to say, but I'm, I'm afraid you haven't convinced me. Send me a link. You know, literally, I'm sitting here stretching this, this E string right here. And I will, not send you, I will not send you a link. You send me a kick guitar. I'll video the build, and I'll show you my method at the end of the build. Bullshit. That's just a way to get a free kick guitar. I've gone down to... I've gone down... Just stretching that, I've gone down to uh, uh, a full semitone, because I haven't really put in the time on these things. So I'm now at... This is a locking tuner. I, I don't don't really I don't really care what your terminology is. All I care <laughs> I literally I literally don't. I care that what I'm doing stops the string from detuning when I play it. Period. And that is exactly right, well, what's happening. We'll, we'll, agree, we'll agree, agree to disagree for now, but cool. I'll send you a video of, of my preferred method that gets the job done in like five seconds. Fair enough. Please do. And uh, the next time we're on the stream, we'll talk about it. Awesome.
Cool. Right, lovely to meet you, I'm, I'm not trying to hijack his dream, but I, it's been fun nonetheless. It has been. I'm really impressed you managed to do this without uh, swearing or saying a dirty joke. So, uh, awesome, man. I'll speak to you in a bit. Look, I, I'm not that much of a, uh, of a naughty man. <laughs> there we go. I, I had, a, I had a, a radio interview a number of years back. And I did exactly what you've just done there. I got him to the point where he was like, don't. And so I, I paused. And instead of the whatever swear word should have come behind, I, you know, I put something else in. But uh, it's always fun. Anyway, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good one. I'll, Bye. I'll leave you to it because I've taken far too much of your strength. Yeah, it's all fun and games. We'll see what people say. Goodbye. Love you, dude. Bye. All right. So. Uh, Robert R. Yeah, Ben, the truth comes out now he's wanting it. Um, once actually at the point of plastic deformation, the string will continue until it breaks. Bedding in the windings of the low strings may be a thing. I agree. I'm, and I 100% agree that uh, bedding in the windings is a thing. There is um, potentially truth in what Mark is saying. There is also truth in what I'm saying, that the, the metal moves to a certain extent. It's, it's at rest and there is a certain amount of deformation um, before you get to something that is absolutely perfect. Uh, tensile test, tensile test graphs, graphs show, I can't say that sir. NTO Steve has said tensile test graphs show this clearly. Uh, I'm assuming proving what I'm saying. So, there we go. I'm back down almost a semitone. Uh, yeah, this is a good one from Sweet Tea. The fact that you can pull up on a Floyd with no breakage means that the string is elastic, which means that they are elastic. That's a good point. Well, there we go. So I'm still, instead of going right down to E flat, I'm still actually in the E's now, according to this tuner. Uh, Chris Pru, uh, sorry, Chip Pru has been stretching strings on his guitars for about 50 years. <laughs> I never realized that this was a potential uh, sort of uh, myth. There's a lot of bullshit in guitar building. There really, really, really is. But, yeah. Beth McKenna says, all fun and games until someone gets poked in the eye with a stick. Look at that. So I'm almost perfectly tuned now. Uh, now what Mark does may well achieve the same thing and may achieve it faster, but hey. Um, it's doing the same thing, in my opinion. Uh, Steen TV says, keep on stretching. Am I pronouncing that correctly? S-T-E-E-N. Steen TV. Steen? Or Steen. Depends on where you are. There we go. I'm... Do, do, do. Mark says he will prevail. Yeah. So there we go. At this point, the string isn't stretching anymore. It's bedded in, the metal has got to its point where it's happy being at this particular note and it's staying put, which is what we're talking about. Um, apparently Stephen Clark says essentially we're saying the same thing but utilizing different techniques and terminology. That's, that's what I was saying with, uh, with Mark. I don't care what terminology he's doing, but we're getting the same, we're doing exactly the same thing. NTO Steve says, tuning is well in the elastic range or the string would not work. I mainly agree with Mark as an engineer, but have little guitar experience. Okay. Well, you're banned. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, oh, it's just a surname. How do you pronounce it then, Mr. Steen? Or Stien? Or Stern? Or Stein? I don't know.
uh, Vax Headroom. Uh, it says, yeah, uh, Mark and I are using the same other word, stretching to mean different things. Ben's using it to describe pulling on the string, and Mark is using it to mean metal stretching. Oh. Yeah. Norm Barrows says, the string has reached final under load length. Yes, there we go, that's a way of saying it. Um... <laughs> well, Gurning in Evolution is really happy he's gained two subs, uh, subscribers last night. If you aren't yet watching his build, go and check it. Norm Barrows, I absolutely agree with you. The string has reached its final under load length. And uh, I've achieved that by stretching it. And Mark achieves that by stretching it just outside, I think. But I'm looking forward to the, uh, the video. Uh, anyway, where are we? We've been going for 5 hours and 16 minutes. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, checking our tensile strength grafts and things. We'll tighten around the tuner and the ball will settle into the bridge. This is probably more of an effect than metal deformation. That is interesting. That it, and I'm not saying that you guys are wrong. I'm just saying... And yes, I agree that you're going to settle in around here, etc. I agree that there's movement everywhere, but there's a physical thing. Hmm. Yeah, so Norm Barrow says, Ben is stretching the string, it does the same on locking nuts. So, uh, yeah, on every guitar I've had with a lock nut, etc., doing, doing that, even with a Floyd Rose. And that's the thing. So we need to get a piece of, we need to get a string, tune it, under load and then see hell i'm tempted to do it right now um what have i got clamp fine experiment time come on then i'm gonna go put this guitar down hold on back in a second all right so what I need, what I need is some clamps. Where are all my clamps everywhere? Hmm. How do I do this? First of all, we put the Allen key back where it belongs. Damn it, I can't find the... Uh, there we go. So essentially, you guys are saying, or some people are saying, that the biggest issue is that uh, the, the string is stretching and deforming. The string is settling in around the tuners, etc. And that is causing, that is where the stretch is. Uh, I fundamentally disagree and say that uh, as much if not more of the effect that we're talking about here is from the metal of the string actually stretching. So if we have a string locked between two points uh, under tension, i.e. a Floyd Rose sort of thing, but without the Floyd Rose's um, spring tension, etc., then, then yes, it's it's the metal itself stretching under tension until it reaches an equilibrium and it's nicely tuned. The problem is setting up an experiment to do that with zero time is... Hmm. Hold on, I've got a tuner. I think I've already got a tuner in a chunk of wood from... That random guitar I built a while ago. No.
this is the problem. The workshop is in absolute state. I can't find anything. All right. Tell you what, I've got a guitar neck here. All right, so I've got a guitar neck. And I wanna, I'm gonna clamp a string. We're gonna do this actually with the guitar neck. Okay, that's cool. I know what I'm doing now. So I wanna raise the string over the end of the neck and then clamp it down. So there's absolutely no movement. I'm just going to grab a piece of solid steel bar. Which is covered in swarf and oil, so let's clean that off. So that will sit there. And I'm just going to clamp I'm just going to clamp the string to that. I don't want to particularly damage the fretboard. Let's put that in there. Uh, <laughs> Simon Bayliss is coming with a 50 pound super chat. Um, Simon, thank you very much. And he says, just a little something to say thank you for all the hours of entertainment you've given over the years. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, I, I need a nut. I thought you were going to wade into the argument. Um, I just need to find a, find a nut quickly. I don't think I have any locking nuts here, so... Uh, Here we go. So I've got a, uh, a locking go to 510 tuner here. Um, I'm going to stay where you are. Yeah, I'm going to stick this in. So this is going to bring us to tension, and then I'm going to, uh, and we're going to use a wound string for this. So, and just because, well, it's not necessary. Uh, let's tighten that up. I do want to use this next, so I'm not going to drill random holes in it. Wrong one. Okay. So there we go. I've got a tuner. The tuner is now uh, locked in place. I've got a piece of steel that's in place on the end of the neck. And uh, that's just sitting there. And there's going to be a little bit of movement while the string bed's in place. But my plan is to clamp the string to that bit of bit of metal there and absolutely clamp that so that's not going to move <coughs> hell i might even wrap it around the whole end of the neck okay so here we go brand new 46 gauge Excuse me. Okay, I'm not feeling very well. Um, just in the interest of doing this quickly, here we go. And because it's going to be hidden, I'm going to drill a hole in the back of this and hold that on. It might break the end of the fretboard, but at this point, I'm just having too much fun to care. Now.
just do. Yep, you should do. Will that go through that? No. Will you? Nope. No. Um, all right, change of plan. And if I can find some more screws somewhere. No. Okay. Steel saddle locked with a clamp, do the same thing at the nut after tuning before. Try both methods, anything less is pointless. Hold up. <laughs> um, you, you, there's no AB on this. If the string stays in tune, even after I've stretched it between two clamps, then then the point is proven that it's elsewhere. Uh, screw the strings flat to the bench. You don't... What I'm trying to prove here, Mark, is that the string itself, in between the two clamps, stretches as I stretch it. I'm taking out the bits that you say are what's happening entirely to prove that they are maybe part of the problem but not the whole be all and end all. This is the thing. Anyway, I'm enjoying this. Uh, where is that? There we go. I need Okay, so I'm just drilling a hole here. Hold on. Now, I, I really do want to remove all possibility of deformation causing an issue. If I wrap the string around the end of this, then it could bite into there and there could be settling there. So in reality, in reality, what I want to do is I want to use my workbench. I think. How are you doing? I'm, uh, I was, thank you very much. I was supposed to be finished, but uh, Mark Jennings has started a fight about uh, string stretching. Uh, uh, Tony has brought me a, a, a tea. And. So no, when when I stretch, when I put a guitar, when I put a string on, you you stretch it so that it reaches a sort of equilibrium and stays in tune after that fact, which is provable. He's saying it's something to do with the tuners and uh, uh, it's settling in other places, and it's nothing to do with the string itself deforming. Uh, and what he's saying is part of the thing, but not the entire thing. So I'm just doing a quick experiment to, um, yeah, prove him wrong, just for shits and giggles. Goggles. Ah, goggles. They're right there. Uh, okay. Here we go. So. And thank you for that, too. Great fun. Uh, yeah, this is... This would be best done on a with a piece of metal rather than anything else. Okay, so what I've got here is that in place. There's absolutely no movement. It's a chunk of metal. Uh, I need to find this piece of metal, which pulls it above the level of the... 
So this is just to, the clamp is holding that in place. This is acting as a saddle. And when it's under tension, that there will be, once it's hit its thing, it will sit exactly where I want it to. And then essentially I need to lock it in on this other side. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the string to tension to a note. I don't need a tune or anything like that. I just need to clamp it to this. Oh no, I've got a freaking... <laughs> Where are we? Channel 4. Sorry. Just dropped my water bottle. So I've got a, I've got a vice here. So I can clamp this in place and there's going to be no movement. I've got a piece of metal. Uh, I've got the string wrapped around a piece of metal at this end. I've got a string wrapped around a piece of metal at this end. The metal is not going to move. Yeah, none of that. There's no settling, etc. And uh, once I've brought it up to tension, to a note, then we should reach something that we can verifiably prove. Now, as you can see, I'm also that's not not the ideal plan. Hold on. I want a clamp that's gonna stay out of the way. Do -do -do. I hope this is strong enough. So the argument here is that there is no stretch in the physical string itself, but that it is bedding in around itself in the, uh, around the tuner, etc. So I'm not wrapping this around anything. I am just clamping it very hard between two pieces of metal. There's nothing to bed in. Okay, so you guys can hear that, yeah? Where's my... Oh, I'm just going to grab the tuner that's uh, on the guitar now in the other room. Oh. Yeah, and where's camera three? Okay, so I'm going to use the workbench to tune this to a note. And then... Yeah, you can see that, that's good. I never thought I'd ever play my workbench, but actually the end vice, uh, the end vice works really well as a, <laughs> as a makeshift tuning system. Okay. <sighs> Terry Love says, I haven't seen a fight like this since I was at school and kids were fighting over whether baking a Congo was cheating or not. <laughs> um, what's a Marcordi? That's from Peter Crossley, saying I need to make a replica. I could have used a big clamp and had it exactly. That's a very good point. Okay, anyway, so I need to get on this side so we can do the thing. So can everybody understand what my, what my thought is here? Uh, let's find... Let's find uh, a position
There we go. All right, so we've got a G. This is spot on. Uh, NTO Steve says, if you pull it hard enough, it will stretch, then need retuning. Exactly. The point is that this is not needed to bed the ends in all their fittings. This is, <laughs> this is, this is the point. I'm, I'm saying that your string does have elasticity in it. And when it comes, so for example, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about wood. If you've got a, if you've got a, a piece of wood that's just come out of a, um, you chopped it down and somebody's had a drying, air drying for a while and it gets down to 14% um, equilibrium moisture content. It's the, it's the bit where it has reached equilibrium with its atmosphere, with its, where it is, and it's not going to lose or gain any more moisture. If you take that same piece of wood and put it into a kiln and dry it down to 7%, 8%, now, that piece of wood may take on a little bit more moisture if you uh, bring it into a very moist environment, but it will never take on as much as if it was, uh, it will never go back all the way up to 14%, uh, which was when it was air dried. It'll stop at 10 or 12. This is one of the reasons why kiln dried wood is better. Okay. Now, the same thing is here. This string was stretched and wound and done all that sort of stuff. And then it's been sitting unstretched un under no tension, no tensile load whatsoever for however long it's been in the thing. You put it on your, on your guitar, yeah, lock it between two points and uh, bring it up to tune. And it will continue stretching a certain amount, probably less than a millimeter, but you're losing your tuning. What Mark is saying here is that <laughs> what Mark is saying is that it's nothing to do with the string. It is to do with bedding in around tuners and things. So I've had it strung up to my bench here for, for a couple of minutes. We've got the tuner, which you can't currently see. My bad. We're spot on G. Now, if what Mark is saying is, is the be all, end all and only truth, Hold on, let's focus. You can't actually see that. Come on. Sorry. Let's, uh, let's do this. Then the string has no stretch and it is entirely to do with... No, you just can't read that. Hold on. I need to move this onto here. How's that? There we go. You can see that now. All right. So, yeah, if the be all and end all is that uh, it is the string bedding in around the um, around the tuner and around, and it's the ball end bending, uh, bedding into the, <sighs> into the bridge and all of that jazz, then, then what I'm about to do wouldn't make any difference. However, I've got this string locked in between two immovable spots. It's clamped in, it's not moving. The workbench is not moving. Uh, it's clamped to two pieces of steel. That's not moving. The ball end is out of the picture. There is no nut to bed it into. There is. No, I've taken away all of the bits and pieces that Mark says are absolutely essential. And I can't believe I'm getting into this so much. But I guarantee that I'm still going to be able to detune the string just by stretching it at least a semitone. So I'm currently sitting here. And this tuner really sucks, or at least it's running out of battery. So I'm going to stretch the string now. And this is exactly how I stretch it. Actually, I'm going to stay away from that because I don't want that to move. 
So I'm, I'm basically stretching like that. And this is making the string just a tad longer. And in fact, the thought that stuff is bedding in has just made me realize that it's entirely possible that the winds going around the string are bedding into themselves. But remember that lovely G note that we had just now? We won't have that anymore. Let's go back to camera three. We've gone all the way down to an F. Because the string, it did, the bridge bit moved a fraction, but it went back to it. The bridge bit isn't moving left or right, it's just vibrating on itself. So we've gone all the way down to an F by stretching and adding a little bit more stuff. Okay, Beth has decided the trial is flawed, which says to me that uh, I need to go again. Uh, but anyway, now, the fact of the matter is that uh, the string itself is physically stretched, there is also going to be bedding in. Um, and I can play my workbench now. Uh, if you would like to see me do a, yes, uh, Sandy Drosdick temperature does make a difference, uh, a lot less than tension um, than, than this. It's gonna be a much finer uh, thing. So if you've got an aluminium neck, for example, and take it from a cold van into a, uh, into a warm club, uh, your guitar will go entirely out of tune very rapidly. And that's one of the reasons I don't like aluminium bodied or, or necked guitars. Um, Rab Knox thinks Mark is just winding me up, which is entirely possible. Um, I'm interested in, yeah, I'm interested in uh, how people work. Uh, anyway, the final piece, stretch, detune, then retune without a stretch. Huh? Oh. Okay, that's a very good point, actually. Who was that? Uh, so, E and M. So, we've got that. Now, I wish I could retune accurately with this workbench. Get into an actual G is difficult when you're... when the thread of your workbench is so coarse. All right, so we got back up to the G then. And then what you're saying is that um, I need to re-stretch and make sure that there's no more movement involved which at this point there will be so we're yeah oh i don't know i'm bored now i could stretch this for a good five minutes before it reaches actual actual equilibrium but you are right uh beth tell me how it's flawed i'm interested because i do want and this mark really is screwing with me so the bridge bit has moved, but it's not moving this way. If you have a quick look, so the bridge bit is moving like that, but it is sitting up against the edge of the clamp. It's always at the same spot. You see? That's not changing the tuning in any way, shape or form. Sorry, that's not quite showing what we're supposed to be looking at. because that bridge bit is sitting against the clamp, which is holding it exactly at the scale length I want. So that's, that's can't, you can't say that's a flaw, that's just. A thing. <sighs> I can't believe I care so much. 
All right, so stretch, 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 stretch. Let's stretch this. See how it's losing, it's gaining length. It's not under as much tension as it was before. Now, what this might actually be is, um, <laughs> is the windings of the strings also bidding in them amongst themselves. I think, however, the more people are calling uh, Mark a troll, that I think this might just be what he's doing. Uh, professional level troll. And because I actually know the guy, I think you're probably right. Dum, 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 dum. Anyway, so there we go. Now what's going to happen is the... Uh, the I can, I'll tell you actually what my issue is. My issue is that there was one other person who insisted to me that... Uh, it was not required to stretch strings of a guitar. And that person was the biggest tool I have ever met in my life. Uh, and sadly, sadly spent rather a lot of time with this fool. And uh, that was sort of the final nail in his coffin in my eyes, was not believing that uh, one needed to stretch the strings in order to reach you know, tuning stability. It was like, ha, strings will magically achieve their own thing. Yeah, because they're under tension. It just takes longer. Anyway. Alrighty. Ian M says, troll or not, I like a good scientific-ish test. It's scientific-ish. I'm not being, uh, yeah. Mark says, uh, I'm not saying that, I'm saying that he isn't disproving me with this test, not proving himself. I'm happy to provide my proof, but I'm not on the stream. Um, send me your, send the link. Seriously. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is, this is unfortunately, I have quite happily to myself proved that the bedding in makes no difference whatsoever. I have the string happily clamped between a couple of immovable things. Uh, I've tuned it and detuned it and detuned it by stretching it. Uh, I am physically stretching the physical string itself. The metal has a certain amount of give in it, which is to be expected. And, you know, as many people have said, this is how strings work. Um, unwound strings do the same thing, but to a lesser extent. Um, but yeah. Have the metal pegs cut into the bench? Absolutely not. Uh, we're talking about a half inch wide chunk of metal in a purpose cut slot. Um, but yeah. So NTOC says, no, not troll. If you were stretching past the yield point, it will lengthen. And that's what's happening. It's, it's lengthening, but it's lengthening to a point where the string stays in tune through normal playing. Normal playing, we're putting tension on the strings. Normal playing, we're, we're bending and all that jazz. Um, what do you guys think is happening when you bend a string and it goes out of tune? Do you think that you're bedding it in at the nut? Do you think you're bend it, bedding it into the saddle or, the, 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 uh, or around the tuner or which is part of it. I'm not saying that isn't part of it. Um, and this is actually what's starting to annoy me is that you can't see that even what you're saying there, even what you're saying there, um, NTO Steve, sorry, uh, is that yes, there is a yield point. Um, you're agreeing with my argument. Um, it's the fact that Mark is saying that there is no stretch that is what's getting my goat but anyway look uh if we have any questions uh there we go mark jenny says if you stretch past the yield point it will continue to stretch when playing a bent note that's not true sorry that might be true but that's not what it, what is happening here i am stretching it to its equilibrium point where it stays in tune it's something that any one of you can figure out and can do on your guitars 
at home. Um, but anyway, uh, Mark says he doesn't have a link, it's just his experience. Okay, well, here we go. I'm afraid you're, um, uh, yeah, this is fun. Jules, uh, Jules sent a super chat to him. Thank you, Ben, for showing that so well. Can you tell me what strength you should have on a fretboard? Uh, five millimeters, six, eight millimeters or something. Um, okay, so this is really, really, really timely question. I've, I've, I'm starting to play more guitars. I'm starting to get into looking in detail at older instruments that I like the sound of, or new instruments I like the sound of. And without fail, almost all of the guitars that I really like the sound of have a relatively thin fretboard. So in the center of the radius of the fretboard, it's about six millimeters, sometimes less than that. Uh, now, most of the guitars I've built over the years have had thicker fretboards, seven millimeters or even more. And that is going to change moving forward. So I would say uh, thinner fretboards will be better. Better. Terry Love sent a super chat, said, question, why am I still watching? I have no idea, Terry. I've, this has been fun. Um, this, has been, this has been interesting. Uh, I am going to arrange a visit to Rotosound who are uh, one of the, well, it's, uh, they're almost certainly the largest guitar string manufacturing company in the UK. I'm going to go and visit them and I'm going to ask them this question on camera and we will revisit this back then with the proof of the people who actually make the strings rather than uh, one or two people's, oh, this is my life experience uh, kind of a thing. Uh, Mark's sending me a message saying he's not trolling, by the way. It's fair enough. It's, I find it very, very interesting. I find the whole thing very interesting, but uh, uh, your argument is flawed in that it is physically what's happening with the metal and it's obvious and patently true and something that all the string manufacturers agree is true. Um, this is, in my opinion, well, it is what it is, but anyway. Um, Mark's come in with a super chat and said, uh, Terry Love, because it's fun and I'm not trolling. Ha! Um, Timon says it's less stiff. Um, Paul Need says, badly executed scientific engineering experiments. I mean, yes, badly en engineered. I could have done it with, you know, many other ways, and we will do it in other ways, I'm sure, if this becomes an actual issue. Um, but I'm fairly, I did not too bad with the, uh, very little, and you can hear it's still in tune, uh, with very little um, preparation. My workbench sounds good, doesn't it? Paul Cook says, press the lick button and smash the subscribe. I like it. Okay, Daniel Marquez says, question, I'm not sure if that was uh, answered yesterday. I lost most of the stream. Uh, sorry about that. How'd that happen? Uh, should, could, must I use the penetrating or high build oils in the fretboard? I did answer this, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry you missed out. Um, you don't have to use the penetrating or the high build oils on the fretboard. In fact, I would not um, choose to personally, unless I'm after a particular type of finish, i.e. a higher build, glossier kind of a thing. Most fretboards are breathing wood. Um, they take on moisture and lose moisture, etc. And uh, instead of a curing oil like the guitar finishing oils, we use uh, our guitar uh, restorative, which is this stuff. And it's a non-drying oil. It, um, it energizes the wood. Oh my gosh, I sound like somebody who believes in crystals. Um, it... I've lost the word now. It adds moisture to the, to, the, to the timber and stops it from drying out too much and uh, lasts quite a long time, but it does need to be done on a semi-regular basis. Whereas a guitar finishing oil will seal it and the wood underneath will still potentially end up being too dry over time. So yeah, I would say this is your best bet. Uh, Beth said, Ben, you did very well considering you are not well. Thank you. Uh, best method, ebonizing wood. It depends on the wood. Some woods you can uh, activate the tannins by using a, a mixture of uh, vinegar and wire wool and stuff like that, and then you paint it on it just goes black. Uh, most woods, the easiest bet is just to get some stains. Crimson stunning stains are an option, and use that to stain it black. Uh, 
NTR Steve says pulling the string solves a problem but should probably not be described as stretching the strings. If we're talking about semantics at this point then I'm entirely lost. Uh, I am physically making the string a little bit longer by pulling on it and that is detuning it. I am physically physically changing the physical structure of the string by pre-tensioning it so that when I, when I play, I'm not going to detune it. This is what I'm physically doing and I, I, yeah, anyway. Ian M says, if bedding is the problem, the string won't stay in tune. Uh, if stretching is the problem, it will. Uh, thus what I've just, what I've just done and what everybody has, who's ever stretched a string will do. Um, but anyway, it's all fun and games. Pair ebonizes very well. I did not know that uh, timing guitars. That's quite cool. Uh, Mike and Noah says Amazon sold out of Cretan Lyra strings, which are a couple of inches longer than viola strings and are perfect for me. I could pay three times on eBay, but I'm considering just learning how to make my own. I don't know the brand. I'm interested in uh, what do you use them for? Um, and if you end up making your own, sign me up. That sounds interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Paul C says sausage in a bun. Woohoo, just got a text. Um, Uh, Simidakos says, why not just use the tuners to stretch? That's essentially what we're doing, but uh, the tuners are very gentle, uh, and that's what they are meant to be. I'm putting quite a lot of tension. Uh, so I'm sort of putting a, a, about an inch of lateral tension on each string all the way along. I'm physically stretching small sections of the string or bedding in the, uh, the coils or whatever you want to say um, across the whole thing. And I do it evenly along the whole string, otherwise it does not have the same result uh, in my experience. And I have quite a lot of experience doing this, by the way. Uh, but anyway, it's all fun. Uh, Paul C says, uh, Crimson Spirit Stains are on the way. I'll be able to carry on with my Banjolele restorations. Fantastic. Um, and thank you very much for your support. Marshall Vine's going back to work. Norm Barrow says, I'm lazy and I just tune new strings sharp at first. That's another way. Look, in the end, if you tune a guitar and you tune it, you know, a semitone or so sharp and then put it in a cupboard and leave it for a couple of days, the strings will stretch and reach equilibrium. It'll just take, I don't know, five days a week, maybe. I don't know. Um, I never do it that way. But uh, the end result is the same thing. You're physically stretching the string to a certain point. There is also some bedding in around the tuner. I agree with you. There is some slippage to a certain extent as well. I absolutely agree. But in general, um, saying that there's no physical movement to the strings, that's what I'm fighting against here. Yeah. Anyway. Sparks Frugal Fixer is off to thermoforming an ABS guitar, but you slowed me with science. Fantastic. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. I am 100% calling it a day. And uh, this has been fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to Roto Sound and uh, seeing what they say. Mark, I will keep you uh, informed. Everybody, click like, subscribe. <sighs> I do not know yet whether I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow. Um, probably not. But uh, yeah, watch this space. There will be live streams going up at short notice on a semi-regular basis from, this, from, from now on. Um, so there we go. Oh, Mark, you're really, really, really goading me at this point. So much fun. See you soon. Goodbye. Doop -de -doop.